Mrs. Kirby? Here. Mr. Hill? Here. Mrs. Harrison? Here. Mr. Holbrook? Here. Dr. Mealy? Here. Mr. Nelms? Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. So moved. I have a motion by Dr. Mealy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Nelms. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Agenda approved. Tonight's first portion of the meeting, we're going to hear from the candidates. They are listed in alphabetical order. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Daniels had a previously scheduled business trip, and he is stuck. His plane is, is stuck, and he's unable to make it here in time. We've agreed to let him participate by Zoom. So as soon as he can log in, we'll begin with him. Mr. All right, Damon can you guys John. hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me tonight. Uh, tonight, my talk will be broken down into three, um, to three sections um, referencing Bedford County's motto, life, liberty, and happiness. Life. My name is Christopher Daniels, and I'm a proud resident of Bedford County. Over the past four years, I've been fortunate to raise my two twin boys, Roman and Cash, in Bedford County, specifically in Goode. My family has been blessed to attend such a great, uh, a great school such as Jefferson Forest High School. It is important to me that they are brought up with good family values, to be compassionate leaders, to be understanding, and value the hard work and determination, and to give back to the community, and to be critical thinkers. I am grateful that you would consider me for representing District 7 on the Bedford County School Board. As a product of a K-12 public school education and a private business owner for 23 years, I understand the impact that a great school system can have. Growing up, my parents were very active both in my life and with the local schools. I come to you with an open heart and open mind, wanting to serve by being a voice for the parents, students, guardians, and teachers. They are equally important roles in the development of making good students and citizens. Liberty. Liberty comes in all forms and the definition changes based on life circumstance. I feel that I'm uniquely qualified to sit on this school board. I'm a single father and I understand what comes with those challenges. I'm also the father of a child with special needs and understands the challenges that accompany this circumstance. My son has cerebral palsy and overall developmental delay. I understand the needs of both the children and the parents with special needs as well as extra, the extra emphasis teachers and aides perform to ensure that we get the most out of our school experience. I wanna say thank you to Mrs. Perkins and Mr. Barless and the entire team that supports them at Jefferson Forest High School. Your efforts are seen and appreciated. Additionally, I've spent a career in the private sector after graduating with a bachelor's degree in business administration. For 23 years, I've worked for Jersey Mike Subs. Currently, I serve as an independent area director for Jersey Mike's in North Carolina and Virginia. I also, over, uh, I also own several Jersey Mike's franchises. I've traveled all over the country, opening stores and training thousands of employees, managers, directors of operations, and franchisees. But my success was not directly related to my degree, but hard work and life circumstance. I started at Jersey Mike's behind the counter. I started by asking customers if they wanted a regular or giant, and if they wanted it with Mike's wife. I rose through the ranks from sandwich maker to a multi-franchise owner. I've been blessed with a great company uh, to be with a great company, and I work very hard every day to add value. But I'm also blessed to be part of a company that treats others as family, values people, and works hard to invest in people. It's our duty as citizens to invest in our children and teachers to give them the best tools and technology to be successful. The goal of any investment is to have a measurable and tangible return on that investment. As parents and as a community, we see this on a daily basis with our children's development. But that building block development happens over time. The compounding return on that investment is when they have the necessary skills, knowledge, and tools to be successful. We need to teach our kids to be entrepreneurial, to never settle, 
to, uh, to, to have the ability to think critically, to take personal responsibility, and help others along the way. That is the true definition of liberty. Happiness. It is our job to prepare for our children for life's opportunities. If we successfully perform the roles of parenting, teaching, mentoring, and holding each other accountable in love, we will build the next generation of successful, strong leaders, enriched with the knowledge and ingrained with values. There are many elements to building the next generation of leaders, but a foundation grounded on the community working together will yield better results and lead us into the future. In my career at Jersey Mike Subs, it has always been instilled in us that we need to be giving back and making a difference in someone's life. I intend on using that same servant leadership skill set to contribute to Bedford County. Being part of the school board will give me another avenue to apply these principles to better our community. That is what our goal as parents, guardians, teachers, aides, administrators, and as a school board should be, to be a positive influence in the lives of everyone that we touch. While these past two years sure have been challenging, and there definitely are issues that divide us, it is important for us to focus on what unites us, because there is much more that unites us than divides us. I believe that our future is bright, and I also believe that working together, Bedford County can be a shining light and an example to the rest of the state of what can be accomplished when we work together. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Thank you. Next, we have Raymond Smith. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and my friends of Bedford County. My name is Raymond Smith, and I'm a proud son of Bedford County and the Bedford County Public School System. I am a graduate of Otter River Elementary, Forest Middle School, and Jefferson Forest High School Class of 2019. My other educational careers involve CVCC, where I've received my associates in education and general studies, and the University of Lynchburg, where I am currently going for my bachelor's in history and social studies in secondary education with the goal of becoming a teacher here in Bedford County Public Schools. It is Bedford County Public Schools that made me want to become a teacher because of the dedicated administrators, staff, and teachers that pour their hearts and souls every day into the youth of Bedford County. My time with Bedford County Public Schools was filled with a lot of involvement from SOL review assistance. Uh, when I was in high school, I went back to Forest Middle School and would help with the World History One SOL review. Uh, I was involved in Jefferson Forest High School's theater program, which taught me not only the importance of public speaking and the importance of individuals, but also the importance of community and what it means to everyone. Since graduating from Jefferson Forest, I've had the privilege of chaperoning school trips, serving on the superintendent's advisory, serving in educational trainings with faculty and staff of all levels and in all zones of the county, which has exposed me to even more amazing individuals that our county has to offer. I currently get the pleasure of collaborating with teachers at Jefferson Forest High School in a unit on Congress and congressional debate. Outside of Bedford County Public Schools, I am a part of Little Town Players Incorporated, the cornerstone theater of our Bedford community, and enjoy the privilege of being their secretary of the board. But most of all, the achievement that I'm most proud of is that for the last two years, I've been a substitute teacher in Bedford County Public Schools. In my goal to be a teacher, I always thought when I graduated, well, that's it for four years until I come back to teach. But then substitute teacher became an option. And so I immediately put in my application in January of 2020 and began that same month. Little did I know that the pandemic would come into play a few months later. But it was that pandemic that has given me some of the most invigorating and challenging school days of my life. 
that have given me the opportunity to see what teachers are truly capable of and how resilient students are in the face of adversity. When I was at Forest Middle School subbing for long term, I got to see every day teachers coming in, pushing through, showing them that our educational process does not end because of outside influences, but instead perseveres on for the good of the community. I got to see students come into school every day, even though they knew that there was a pandemic going on and that there were stressors outside the building, come in focused on learning. It is these experiences that compelled me to come before you all and ask for the appointment. Because I have been in the schools. I've seen the wear and tear. I've seen the energy that is still there, desperately ready for this pandemic to leave so that way things can be in full force. I have seen the students come in and I am so dedicated to making sure that every day forward continues to be a hallmark in their lives. What do I hope to accomplish? There are several things. Emphasis on fine arts departments, which we have seen have proven more and more to be sources of social emotional learning for our students. Emphasis on early college and CTE programs to show that there is more than one place for you to go after high school. You are not limited to college and you are not foolish if you choose to go into CTE and occupations that make our world so wonderful. Special needs curriculum and teachers. We need improvements. We need reinforcements in order to ensure that all children all across the board are given the opportunities to succeed in life. One of the important things to me is the reevaluation of teachers and staff. Many feel that they are not heard. Many feel that they are not supported. And I feel that we should do everything in our power to ensure that they never feel that way ever again. Another group that equally deserves it is families and parents. There's a sacred trust that is given to any board and any elected group with the electorate. And it is paramount to our success that we increase dialogue and communication to ensure that all stakeholders in education feel heard, represented, and loved. My perspective, as I've said, I've been a student. I've seen areas for improvement. I have volunteered. I've seen the importance of community involvement. I have coached at Jefferson Forest High School as a debate coach, and I'm a teacher in training. There are multiple options available. 30 seconds. And so, with all of these experiences, with everything, I offer a viewpoint that is different and that is needed. My blood runs through Bedford County, and my one goal and aspiration is to help lead and ensure that the school division is always a place of academic excellence with three important truths. Parents deserve a voice, teachers deserve to teach, and above all else, students deserve the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Sheree Whitehurst. Quality education begins with school board members listening and hearing the voices of the community. I believe the voices of the community matter, and I have the compassion and the courage to listen to those voices and to advocate for them. I believe the school system is to be a reflection of the community. You've heard it said, no child left behind. Well, I say our community cannot be left behind. I'm a Christian conservative with a strong community heritage. My family roots go back six generations to, in Bedford County. One of my great grandfathers was born in the town of Liberty that was later renamed Bedford, and then he moved to Thaxton. My mother and father both taught more than one generation of students right here at Liberty High School. I started school at Bedford Primary School, and I finished at Liberty High School. 
I performed in the musical Oklahoma right here on the stage. And I played girls basketball in the gymnasium just a few yards away. I know how important the fine arts and sports programs are to this community. My children graduated from Liberty High School and my grandson will be starting school in District 7 this fall. I have a strong background in education. I have a doctorate from Virginia Tech in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies. And setting policy is one of the main functions of a school board. Because of a brother, I have a concern for special education. In fact, I completed my dissertation on the topic of access to the general curriculum for students with disabilities, and I dedicated my dissertation to him. I spent a career in education in Bedford County, working as a teacher, as an assistant principal, as a principal, and as a deputy superintendent. I've served on numerous boards and councils, including, but not limited to, the Bedford Area YMCA, the Bedford Chamber of Commerce, the Bedford Area Resource Council, the Lynchburg College Advisory Board, the Lynchburg Center for Economic Education, and the Lynchburg All Points EAP. I believe serving on these boards has helped prepare me to serve on our school board. In the most recent homeschool report, I can hear concerned voices from the community. There are 1,387 students who are homeschooled, and only 173 students are homeschooled for religious reasons. Bedford County receives over $10,000 for each enrolled student. Our school system is losing millions of dollars in revenue because parents are saying they do not want to send their children to Bedford County Public Schools. I know how many of these parents feel for a short time, I was one of them. We want our community to have confidence in our schools and that they can provide quality education in safe environments. Community members are saying they're concerned about the low enrollment at Liberty High School. When I was principal of Liberty High School, the enrollment was 1,039 students. This past fall, the enrollment was 713. When the student enrollment is that low, it is hard to offer the same courses and extracurricular programs that the sister high schools have. When the city of Bedford reverted to a town, the General Assembly said Bedford County Public Schools could use the town's lesser local composite index for 15 years. As a result, since 2013, Bedford County Public Schools has been receiving $6 million in added state funding each year. In a few years, this money will no longer be provided, and there will be a shortfall of over $6 million for each subsequent year. As a fiscal conservative, I want to address this issue now before it becomes a critical problem. I hear many community voices saying that the appropriation of funding needs to be examined so several programs can be fully restored and brought into the 21st century. A few of these programs include fine arts. Community members want to see full-time art teachers restored in the elementary schools. Library and media. Community members want to see full-time librarians restored in the elementary schools. Special education. Community members want appropriate staffing. They also want the practices of restraint and calming rooms examined. Career and technical education. Several years ago, this program was gutted. Community members want to see CTE continue to be restored. Community members are concerned about recruiting and retaining teachers and ensuring all our schools have nurses, especially Susie Gibson Career Technical Center, which I'm told has no nurse. Community members want our teachers to have state-of-the-art curriculum materials. Bedford County needs a board member who has the background and experience to guide the district safely into the future. Bedford County, needs a, Bedford County needs a board member who says, our community cannot be left behind. It would be an honor to represent my community and serve as the District 7 school board member. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Whitehurst.
Thank you to all the candidates who came out and spoke tonight. We're going to begin the public comment portion of tonight's meeting. The public hearing portion of tonight's agenda is limited to 180 minutes. Speakers are asked to state their name, address, and voting district. The school board is here to listen to your comments, but will not engage or respond to speakers during this 180 minute period. This portion of the meeting is designated for public comments regarding district seven candidates only. Please remember that this is a public meeting and we expect all speakers to refrain from any foul, abusive, or hateful language. Mr. Edwards will serve as timekeeper for individual speakers with a ringing bell indicating that person has 30 seconds remaining and a second bell will ring indicating a person's four minutes have expired. Mr. Edwards will also serve as the timekeeper for a cumulative 180 minute period. When Mr. Edwards four minute timer bell rings, please discontinue speaking and allow the next person in line to come to the podium. Should you be unable to finish your comments, please send or give them to Ms. Johnson right up here in the front row and she will give them to the board. Please do not adjust the microphone it is, as it has been positioned for optimum quality audio. I'm going to call three members, three um, speakers at a time. If you would line up here on the front row so that way you'll be ready to go to the podium when it's your turn. Aaron Farrell. Kelly Harmony and Charlotte Vincent. Good evening, my name's Erin Farrell. Um, I live in District 3 and I have two children in Bedford County. Um, I feel a little emotional, so I've spoken before, but um, this is really important, and I know everyone here um, realizes that. So um, it's just really in my mind to pray for our county right now. So I'm going to pray for a moment and then share a few more things. So God, um, I thank you for the children in Bedford. I thank you for the people wanting to serve them, and um, we pray your will be done. I pray tonight that people speak um, in truth and love and that um, there's unity where, where you want there to be unity. In your name, Jesus, amen. So um, there are a few things I'm hoping for in Bedford long term. One of the things is in particular um, has to do with my daughter um, who has um, some disabilities that I approached a school about early on to help her um, get some resources. I was denied um, testing that the county, I was, I didn't know my rights basically, <clears throat> and I was denied um, testing. We had, it was a positive conversation, but they just said, oh no, she doesn't qualify um, because she's successful in a variety of different ways. So we um, were able to privately get testing and go from there. But there are a lot of families in Bedford that need, um, that don't have that ability. And honestly, I didn't know how to advocate properly. In the last few months, I've learned a little bit more about how to do that. So I think that I speak for a lot of people. Um, some people like Chris Daniels, whose son has more uh, physical challenges or phys my, you know, um, you know, with cerebral palsy, his, his son needs more help, but there are people all over the board who need a lot more. And um, since I first moved to Bedford, I've heard this from my friends. Um, one of my friends actually had two sons with autism, um, both my children's ages, so we were friends and played a lot with them. But they moved specifically actually to Pennsylvania um, because they had some family connection there, but they moved for the services. So I think that we need to serve people, all people here. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I support Chris Daniels because I know, so my little sister has Down syndrome and um, when I was 10, she was born. I've been to many IEP meetings just because I was along with my mom. Um, I spent lots of summers working with people with special needs through all my life. And it's really important to me, I think that Honestly, with all due respect, I think the three candidates are wonderful. Um, I, 
I think everyone has different things that they can offer. Um, what Bedford County needs is someone who is going to advocate with, um, in this case, his heart for, with, with an understanding of what Bedford really needs. So that, that's one of the things. Also, I just want to say that um, having been involved early on in the cause, so to speak, and the movement to allow parents to be more involved in our schools. When we were told by the governor, then Governor Northam, that we're not welcome, um, I was involved in the election process. And thankfully, Matthew Holbrook, seconds. thank you, and um, Dwayne Nelms, both um, won as writing candidates. Chris Daniels helped. And I don't say that because, I mean, he had no idea District 7 would become open. So there was, you know, he he's a parent who was involved since the rest of us basically got involved he cares about parent choice and um, that's evidenced by who he supported earlier on so thank you for your time I have been praying for you guys thank you miss Farrell <laughs> Kelly Harmony it's good to see you at a school board meeting again Hello, my name is Kelly Harmony, and I am speaking in place of Donald Toms as he's sick and unable to attend tonight. I would like to thank all of you for taking the time to serve as school board representatives because I know that it is a thankless job. I grew up in Bedford County and currently live in District 6. I was a graduate of Jefferson Forest High School, and my husband and two children we're all graduates of Liberty High School. You could say we're a house divided. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I spent many years entrenched in Bedford County Public Schools, was elected and served as District 6 School Board Representative prior to my dear friend, Susan Kirby. I know as a board member, there are lots of decisions that rest in your hands. During my time on the board, and you may have experienced this as well, where you need the background on why certain decisions are being made or why things are done a certain way. Cherie Whitehurst was always my go-to person. She was able to articulate from her vast education and experience the intricacies of the school system. You could say she was my Google for Bedford County <laughs> Public Schools. Cherie is the candidate with a 30-year career in education, with 28 years experience within Bedford County, in positions that range from classroom teacher in all three zones, principal, assistant principal, level roles in all three zones, and nine years at the central office level. Board members, you each here represent a diverse population within all three zones. If you're looking for a candidate that will be an advocate for District 7, as well as the children from all three zones in Bedford County, she's the one for the job. If you're looking for a candidate that could maintain and expand relationships with the Board of Supervisors, she's the one for the job. If you're looking for a candidate that has a true heart for students and parents, she's the one for the job. I don't envy the decision you have to make on Thursday, but I do urge you to consider Cherie Whitehurst as the candidate who has the best interest for all the children in Bedford County. She's the candidate that's humble and kind. We all know that we could all use a little more humble and kind in this world. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Army. <laughs> Ms. Vincent, following Ms. Vincent will be Sue Moore, Jim Messier, Ellen Carnes. Start. Yes, ma'am. My name is Charlotte Vincent. I live at 1811 Oakwood Street, Bedford, Virginia. I'm a District 7 uh, <clears throat> member. I have, I'm a retired teacher who taught 34 years in school in five different school systems. The last 25 years were in Bedford County when I retired in 2000. I'm here to support, give this my support for Cherie Whitehurst uh, 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 
to be my district school board representative. She is highly motivated, highly motivated individual who is who is driven to provide the high standards for, uh, of education for the students in both academic and vocational and special needs area. Uh, her qualifications are outstanding. You all have seen her apl application. You know what she has as a reference. Uh, she has taught in all levels, primary, secondary, middle school, uh, high school, and um, she was my assistant principal at Jefferson Forest High School for two years. I could never get to school before she did. <laughs> she was always there way early, and some days I would be there at six in the morning trying to get something, and she'd be in the office and was ready to help me if, if I needed anything. Uh, she was very supportive to the teachers, the students, and the parents and was always available to help the teachers, the students, and the parents when there was a problem or when she was needed. Um, she always made sure that she gave us the best advice to make all of our students as successful as, she, as they could be. With her experience at the level of school system, primary, secondary, middle school, and the central office, um, she's highly qualified for this position. She believes that the students believes that the students need to get the best possible education possible, and she worked with the teachers and the parents to make sure that, that was possible. Uh, there have been many changes in education over the years, lots of changes, and I know you all are familiar with them. But one thing has not changed, and that's the kids. They need to learn, they need to be taught, and they need to be, get the training that they need if they go into a, a job other than the academic area. Uh, the kids, they want to be successful. And it is the job of the schools to make sure that they are provided with a method that can make them be, a, be successful. Dr. Whitehurst will do the best she can to help each of the students. And she'll not only work for District 7, she'll work for Bedford County because she's been in every school in this Bedford County and knows a lot of the people. So um, it would be wonderful if she could be on the school board. Bedford County needs her with all of her talent. She grew up in Bedford County. I know I have known Cherie since she was two years of age, and I can <laughs> testify to her character. She's wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Vincent. Ms. Moore. Hi, my name is Sue Moore, and I live in District 5 at 100 Spring Hill Circle. I've taught 27 years, but my last 18 were in Bedford County, one year at JF and 17 at Thomas Jefferson. My children attended Otter River. For 18 years, I coached three sports in GOOD, started GOOD Recreation, became soccer director at that time, and volunteered at the school. Now I'm proud to say I have three grandchildren that attend that school. I had the opportunity to know Dr. Whitehurst first as a parent and then as an administrator when I was at JF and later deputy superintendent. I worked with her and consulted with her as a teacher, parent, and grandparent. What I know most about Dr. Whitehurst is that she consistently listens and advocates for students, teachers, and parents. She always had an open door policy. I want to give you a few examples. Number one, I witnessed elementary art and library media positions being turned into personalized learning coaches. Dr. Whitehurst compassionately listened to parents, grandparents, and heard their complaints. She th then advocated for them trying to save their art and library programs. Unfortunately, many elementary schools still do not have full-time art and librarians, and the PE and music programs have been also reduced. Number two, 
An entire elementary school staff was told that they had to implement personalized learning even after losing accreditation. This meant that the teachers had to be used as guides on the side while the computers did the teacher teaching. The teachers saw their students struggling and heard the voices of all the unhappy parents. The teachers went to Dr. Whitehurst in their anguish. Dr. Whitehurst listened compassionately. She told the teachers they had a license from the Department of Education to teach, and if they saw a student failing due to the personalized learning approach, then they could choose to get textbooks out and teach the children instead of letting the computers teach them. The next year, that school earned back its accreditation. Year after year, textbook money was mostly used to pay for technology for personalized learning. As a result, the district had technology but no updated curriculum to go with it. Teachers had to spend hours surfing the internet looking for free curriculum materials. Teachers came to Dr. Whitehurst with their concern. She listened and then tried to advocate for them. Unfortunately, even today, teachers in many subject areas still do not have updated curriculum materials. Cherie is a huge supporter of special ed. She watched a close family member struggle with dyslexia, unable to read, read at the age of nine. Her parents had to fight the IEP system to get the proper help. Because of that experience growing up, she's a huge advocate for special ed. She even wrote her dissertation on that subject because she is so passionate. Dr. Whitehurst listens to the voices in the community and advocates for them. She puts the needs of others before her own. Dr. Whitehurst still has a heart to serve. She is currently a student at United Theological Seminary. There she is completing a Master's of Divinity. She continues to be learning new ways that she can serve others. Our community stands behind Dr. Whitehurst. Since we cannot vote, we ask this board to fulfill your obligation to listen to the voices of the community and select Dr. Whitehurst to be District 7 School Board Representative. And one last thing I'd like to thank Bedford County School Board for. My dad was a board member for 27 years mm. in Illinois. Thank you for keeping our schools open last year and this year. You led the way. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Mr. Messier. Jim Messier, 1621 Kingston Circle, District 7. I'm speaking in favor of Dr. Cherie Whitehurst. I've known Cherie since high school. That's kind of a long time. I express my appreciation to all three who threw their hat in the ring for this appointment. None of us would ever question the drive and passion of Raymond Smith, and although he's only lived in District 7 for a short time, uh, Mr. Daniels has certainly jumped into the political arena with both feet. The decision you're now responsible to make, though, is not about politics. It's about our children. One, and only one candidate before you, has spent her entire life dedicated to the children, parents, and staff of Bedford County Schools. Her resume is clear in her deep and unwavering commitment to excellence. She has always shown her desire to not only seek out the will of the parents and the students, but deliver policy on behalf of um, on their behalf. From her high school graduation, not a single decade has passed that Dr. Whitehurst hasn't completed another educational milestone to better herself to serve the students and parents and staff of Bedford County Public Schools. Cherie has worked in all three districts, from teacher, principal, all the way up to assistant superintendent. She knows the needs of the students, she knows the abilities of the teachers, and she knows the wishes of the parents. Not all that long ago, when our school division administration was moving in a direction that a majority of the parents did not wish it to go, Dr. Whitehurst took it upon herself to seek out comments and the wishes of parents all across the county in an attempt to revise the school policies. I attended meetings along with a couple of members of the school board in an attempt to support Dr. Whitehurst. We knew of her value and advocacy to our students, teachers, and parents then, and we now have the opportunity to use her amazing skill sets and willingness to advocate for our students once again. The past two years has brought about unprecedented challenges and change to school systems all over the world. Bedford County school parents mounted a movement when many felt their voices weren't being heard. 
As we transition from pandemic to endemic, it is time to realign the school board to once again make our schools great. Dr. Whitehurst is not an unknown to the school district. She is a fiscal conservative with a servant's heart. As a longtime local businessman and member of the Bedford County Economic Development Authority, I can't stress enough the need for Bedford County Public Schools to be the very best we can possibly <coughs> provide. Very high on the metrics used by companies when looking to locate or stay in a region is the quality of the school system. This not only affects the education of your children, but in a very real way, the quality of your jobs. Dr. Whitehurst has devoted her working to the betterment of the Bedford County Schools. She's taught and led teachers. She's listened to parents and advocated for all students. She has developed curriculum, established policy, and something some of you are just beginning to experience, successfully crafted a budget. She has literally done it all. As the six of you enter into debate to fill this interim position, please put politics aside and think about what is best for our children. With the challenges of staff recruitment and retention, school building planning, and the new wave of charter schools, which will mean the need to do more with less public dollars, we need Dr. Whitehurst. Drawing from my business experience, no successful organization is built by filling every position with the same type of personnel. The most successful identify their needs, determine their weaknesses, and find someone who is strong in those areas. I beg of each of you to look within yourself, examine your heart, and identify your, all, your own weaknesses. We all have them. Then select the candidate who will challenge you, who is strong where you are weak. You will find that Dr. Whitehurst is the person you, no, we need. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Mr. Rizzi. Ms. Carnes, the next three will be Raymond Arrington, Mary Catherine Bennett, and Bobby Johnson. Good evening, school board members. I am Ellen Jean Carnes. I live at 1341 Marigold Drive, Goodview, Virginia, District 1. I'm a retired teacher with 17 years of teaching experience, both at Stanton River Middle School from 1990 till 2002 and Stanton River High School 2002 to 2007. My husband Tom Carnes re retired from Bedford County Schools with 26 years at Stanton River High School. Both of our children graduated from Bedford County and our three grandchildren are enrolled in Bedford County Schools. I am here tonight to urge you to choose Dr. Cherie Whitehurst, a woman of integrity and excellence whom I first met as a fellow educator at Stanton River Middle School back in 1993. Cherie taught eighth grade English. My impressions of her during those first three years were of an educator who cared deeply about both her subject and her students. I was assigned a few times to cover her eighth grade English class. I always walked into an orderly classroom with excellent lesson plans, and students who were well behaved and motivated to learn. I appreciated her preparation for me to step into her shoes for those class periods. She left a lasting impression on me with her professionalism and attention to detail. Then in the spring of 2002, I heard of an opening at Stanton River High School in the Family and Consumer Science Department, what we used to call home economics. I might have an opportunity finally to teach what I had majored in in college. Leaving Stanton River Middle School and the excellent principal, Lynn Roberts, was a very hard decision, but knowing that Cherie Whitehurst was in charge at SRHS and whom fellow educators, including my husband Tom, spoke so highly of her, affirmed my decision to apply. She approved my transfer and for the next four years, until she left in 2006, Cherie was a superb principal. She had very high standards and expectations for her staff, but even higher for herself. Her vision was to ensure Stanton River met and exceeded state academic requirements in all areas of learning. She encouraged student activities in the various clubs and sports that allowed them to become well-rounded and feel valued. She handled discipline issues calmly, 
listened to all sides of the situation with fairness and compassion. She was always accessible, and she was an encouraging bright light in our sometimes hard and tiring profession. I truly enjoyed working with her and getting to know her better as an educator and a person. Dr. Whitehurst, in her application on page two, states that two of her goals she hopes to accomplish, working with other board members, are the following. One, to ensure that students, parents, teachers, and staff members feel valued and are treated with dignity and respect. And secondly, to ensure parent, student, teacher, and community voices are heard. I can vouch for Dr. Whitehurst on both of these goals. She is a woman of excellence and integrity. She will serve Bedford County showing respect, compassion, and courage. In her own words, quote, I believe each child in our community has the right to receive the very best education, end of quote. Please give her the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dorrance. Mr. Arrington. Good afternoon. My name is Raymond Arrington. I live in District 7. My address is 2202 Twin Lake Drive, Bedford, Virginia. You may have known Cherie Whitehurst as Dr. Whitehurst, but I've known her as Cherie. I cannot think of a better person to serve as District 7 school board member. In the time I have known Cherie, she is one that listens and cares. When you talk to her, you instantly feel supported and you know that she is, is there to help any way possible. Since 2007, I worked in the community leading Bedford Youth Focus. Cherie and her husband, Pastor David, have always supported me and my ministry with the youth in the town of Bedford. Cherie has a special concern for the youth in the District 7, and she wants them to be successful in life. Cherie also has supported me with my work as a Sunday school teacher. Through the years, she has helped me write my lesson plans, gather material, and find technology to go with my lessons. She has helped me make my lessons fun, fun with the games, the crafts, and activities. I ask that you choose Cherie as District 7 school board member. Cherie will support you. She will help you. She will work with you and to solve all problems. She will do an excellent job representing the people of District 7. I know Cherie well. And as a fact, I had a basketball game tonight at the Y, but I thought it was more important to come here and support her. Seven and eight-year-old boys, girls. If you choose her, you, 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 will, you will not be disappointed. And once again, if you choose her, you will not be disappointed. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Arrington. Ms. Bennett. Hello, my name is Mary Catherine Bennett, and I live in Forest, Virginia, District um, five and I wanted to tell you that I left my six children at home so my husband had to prepare dinner so pray for them because I felt like this was so important that I needed to come so I am here standing before you because I am so adamantly for our children and for this community that I think that Christopher Daniels is the best option for this school board so let me tell you how I got to meet him and why I think he's the best option for those that don't know, uh, myself and a bunch of other moms and Grandpa Grizzlies, and so we call ourselves Mama Bears, Grandpa Grizzlies, and Granny Bears and Dads all came together because we did not like that our rights were taken away as parents. We were told to mask our children, even those with children with special needs, which I have one. He is autistic, developmentally delayed. He is six years old, but he's more like a two or three year old. He's entered the but why stage, which is great because that means he's progressing. Um, when we started getting involved, we realized we wanted to have more of a voice. And so we started a movement. And Dwayne and Matt volunteered, dads, that realized as well that we needed to be more involved because of our children in the public schools, 
and we got them on board and just through the amazing community that is Bedford County. So he, Dan, Chris Daniels has been there from the very beginning because he also has kids with special needs. So we bonded because of his son, the Celebrity Palsy. Um, we have, he has been at every single school board meeting since August. He has donated his time and his money for Dwayne and for Matt before this even opened up, this position even opened up. Um, he has done so much and has given encouraging words. And so when this position opened, we actually, um, he reached out and said, what do you think? And we said, heck yes, I think you would be the best person for the job. So what I'm noticing is so many wonderful people are here talking about Cherie or Raymond Smith, but I would like to also talk about for instance, Cherie, she's an educator, and I appreciate that, but we worked really hard to get an educator out and to bring parents' choice back in. And I do not want to go backward. We've already got educators represented on the school board, and I really think that Chris Daniels has what it takes. Number one, budget-wise, we know he's also a fiscal conservative. He's already in the GOP party and has been um, in the committee, and I think, that, again, that what we need is to get away from what we had in the past and move on to what's going to happen in the future. There's a lot of great things that could be done with Chris Daniels on the board. We need new ideas, fresh ideas, and more parental involvement. So with that, again, I think all three of the candidates are fantastic, and I appreciate them standing up and volunteering, but the best person for the job, as someone who is on the front lines and has been from August, with children in the schools, listening, teachers reaching out to me, um, staff reaching out to me, parents reaching out to me, Chris Daniels, 100%, is the person who I think best represents Bedford County. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Ms. Johnson. The next three speakers will be Lori Croft, Christian Sneed, and Daryl Updike. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Bergen. My name is Dr. Bobby Johnson, and I reside in District 5 in Bedford County. My address is 414 Meadow Ridge Drive. Thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight in support of Dr. Cherie Whitehurst for a seat on the Bedford County School Board, and thank you for your service. Dr. Whitehurst has been a professional colleague of mine for over <clears throat> 25 years, and I'm eager to share my perception of the value that she would bring to this board. I first met Cherie in graduate school quite a few years ago. We were in a small cohort and so had many of our classes together. I remember being struck by her seriousness as a student <coughs> and her devotion to Bedford County Public Schools. She was a teacher in Bedford at the time and I was a teacher in Lynchburg City Schools. I became interested in Bedford Schools in part because of her descriptions in class of the quality of the schools and the support she felt. Fast forward a few months and Dr. Whitehurst and I were both administrators in Bedford County Public Schools. We crossed paths often and I continue to be impressed by her efforts to grow and learn. She's always been one to ask important questions and to seek to understand situations. I could share so many examples of Cherie's instructional knowledge, her ability to work with people in difficult times, and her dedication to continuous improvement and growth, both personally and professionally. I remember with great admiration her approach to problem solving. There are certain situations that arise in a school that I'm sure you know that must be shared with central office. When Cherie would call me to alert me to a dilemma, I was assistant superintendent at the time, she carefully described the situation. And this is where many uh, administrators would, would uh, stop, waiting for the other person to start the problem solving. But this was never the case with Cherie. She would describe the situation and then tell me what she had thought about as options for resolution, and then she would tell me the option she was, learning, she was leaning towards. While this is as it should be, it can be rare. Until my recent second retirement, I was an associate professor at the University of Lynchburg teaching in their leadership program. I used Cherie's approach to taking responsibility and to the importance of clear reflective problem solving as an example to my graduate students who were working to become leaders. While there are many things about serving on a school board <clears throat> that are very familiar to an educator, it goes without saying that one does not have to be an educator to serve successfully on a school board. 
I can speak to this as a former school superintendent who was blessed with working for an, a very effective school board. Uh, and my school board members were from various walks of life. Of course, your recent instructional knowledge, her experience with students and family challenges, her understanding of the operational side of how schools and school divisions work will be invaluable to a board. But she also has the leadership and finance <coughs> skills that would be welcome in any business in, or industry. She believes in supporting those who do the day-to-day -day work and are on the front line. She understands that funds never match the needs in a school system. And so hard but smart decisions must be made. She knows how to collaborate and serve as a member of a group. So I'll end where I started. Dr. Whitehurst is smart, hardworking, and dedicated to Bedford and Bedford County Schools. A strong team would only be stronger with Dr. Whitehurst on board. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Ms. Croft. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Laurie Croft and I live in District 7 in Goud. It's my distinct honor and pleasure to recommend Dr. Cherie Whitehurst for the open position on your school board. Like me, Cherie grew up here in Bedford County and she's a product of the Bedford County Schools. She could have lived anywhere in the world and she and her husband made the choice to come back here to Bedford County to plant a church, raise a family, and give back to this community that we love so much. Cherie continued a family tradition when she decided to make her career in education. A finer role model than our beloved Coach Cutler no one has ever had. She has been involved in every facet of instruction here in Bedford County. She's been a teacher in the classroom, a principal in all three attendance zones, a central office administrator. I do not need to tell any of you since you have her resume before you but so that others may know, it is clear evidence that the leadership skills and the wealth of experience that she will bring to this board is unimpeachable and unmatched. As a lifelong public educator and parent myself, I'm quite dismayed at the us versus them mentality that has gripped our commonwealth and indeed has even touched our own community. This attitude is neither conducive to educating children, nor is it helpful in building the relationships necessary for our school division to prosper and meet the needs of all stakeholders. Cherie Whitehurst did not tear up her parent card when she became an educator. None of us did. So why are so many supporting Cherie? Because we know that her motives are pure. We know that whether we agree or not with policy, we will be heard. We know that she has a diverse perspective that allows her to have an open mind. Her ability to instill trust will allow the collaborative spirit that is essential to being good stewards of our children's education. Her door is open and she will answer her phone. As a servant leader, Cherie has the talent, the skills, the experience, and the heart to make a difference that we all know is Bedford County Public Schools' greatest potential. Cherie is uniquely equipped to change the great, to meet the great challenges of our day and turn them into opportunities. She is not only the perfect candidate, she is the right candidate. I hope you will choose her as the obvious best choice for working together with you as a team to make all the difference for our children. Thank you so much for your service and for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Carl. Mr. Sneed. Good afternoon, Christian Sneed, 113 Snooty Judy Road in Goo, District 7. I'm here to speak on behalf of Chris Daniels, and while I cannot speak to the character of the other district, the other candidates in District 7, I can speak to Chris Daniels. I speak on behalf of his ability to make sound decisions. I can speak on his ability to stay principled and keep his composure in difficult circumstances. Chris Daniels has a track record both in his personal life as well as his, personal, as, as well as his business life. I've seen both of these sensible approaches. Leaders listen, and that's one of the greatest qualities that Chris exhibits. Chris consumes and considers other vantage points before supplying a solution to a problem. This is a valuable characteristic given that school board members generally balance in the feedback from teachers, parents, administrators, and legal counsel. I firmly believe that Chris Daniels will continue to bring balance without bias to the school board. According to some social media, last election was a popularity contest and not based on qualifications. So what I would ask is what is the definition of qualified? What are the qualifications to add merit to a character, to a candidate? How are these qualifications weighted and how are they measured? Should certifications carry more credence? Should a vested parent be a priority? Should work experience carry a larger weight as an applicable experience. There's no objective tools 
to measure these certain qualifications, but Bedford County is looking for the same attributes that they found in you all for the next board member. Trustworthiness, perseverance, communication, positivity, humility, and passion. We've all had parents, friends, teachers, and coworkers that were not the most qualified, but they did make a large impact on our lives, and we're better for that today. Just several months ago, this school board heard from Bedford County voters. In District 3, there was a write-in candidate runoff. Bedford overwhelmingly supported Dwayne Nelms with over 70% of the total votes compared to his opponent, Robert Ashwell. Dwayne was running against a 48-year administrator who, by paper, might have had a compelling argument to be more qualified. But what I do know is that Chris Daniels with a, was standing with the strong majority of Bedford that day. He gave both his time, money, and perspective advocating for teachers and students, not politics. He stood with me as a sounding board as I tried to help Matt and Duane with this. He always made sound decisions. The Whitehurst, the Whitehurst household made a decision to financially contribute to Robert Ashwell's campaign financially with a $500 campaign contribution. And $500 is a lot of money. But this contribution may create more questions than answers for voters in District 7. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Having spent time with Chris, and working on the campaigns, I know where his heart is. It stands with the 70 plus percent of people that voted in District 3. And that was just four months ago. Not with the 20 percent that supported a lifelong administrator that drew into question as whether you can serve impartially to the system that you've been a part of. To be clear, this is not meant to be disrespectful, but reflective as to whether Ms. Whitehurst, Dr. Whitehurst, excuse me, aligns herself with the 70 plus percent of Bedford County that came out to vote just several months ago, or is it one that she plays role in her tenure through the Bedford County Public School System. Regardless of how you, the board, decides, you will find that the treatment for myself or both Chris as well as Ms. Whitehurst will be the same. As I told Chris, if his approach or his stance changes, our friendship will survive. But he can count on my name being next to his in November. And that's the same for Mrs. Whitehurst. Because in making decisions that need to be in Bedford's best interest is crucial regardless of friendship and accountability is key to true leadership. Chris Daniels has my full pledge of support as the best candidate for District 7 because I feel he aligns with the legacy of Mr. Alimi. I'm up here supporting Chris because he plays teachers, students, and parents first. More importantly, his courage to support the role of teachers and parents and the children's education during COVID craziness. I look forward to seeing his qualifications at work in Bedford County. After all, he is representing my district, District 7. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sneed. Mr. Updike. The next three will be Vincent Short, Tim Black, and Deborah Woodson. Good evening. My name is Darrell Updike out of 203 Peakland Court, District 7. Um, one of the primary rules of public speaking is not to follow a better speaker. Well, I've followed <laughs> several, and I uh, feel I'm uh, sort of at a disadvantage. But that does not uh, diminish the message that I have. Um, you have heard uh, a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life uh, talk about how Dr. Whitehurst uh, has benefited the school system. Um, my only advice is uh, listen. Listen to what you're saying. Uh, in the last sheriff's election, we had three quality candidates uh, running for, uh, for office. You've got three quality candidates here. My opinion, Dr. Whitehurst is the better candidate. Please listen. A lot of people talk about her background, you have her resume, you know what it says. A lot of you know her personally, know her professionally, you know what she can do, you know what her capabilities are. Uh, in November, when the election comes up, if the voters decide to go a different way, that's the voters' choice. Right now, you're in the middle of a term, you need to be able to hit the ground running. Dr. Whitehurst can do that. Thank you for your time. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Updike. Vincent Short. My name is Vincent Short, live at uh, 1070 Century Drive in Goode, Virginia, which is District 5. I'm not a native of Bedford County, but uh, my parents relocated here in 1978, so I started uh, in eighth grade um, at, at that time Bedford Educational Center. Um, it was only the eighth grade, so the next year I started my high school career at uh, Liberty High School. My sister was already there. She was a, a junior. Uh, she started as a sophomore. So naturally going into a high school as the freshman, you kind of tend to look up to the seniors and look for role models. And 
being a Christian, my grandfather was a pastor growing up in church. We had tried several churches in the area. And one of the things that stuck out to me as a, as a young middle schooler and now going into high school was that a lot of the kids that I met in church didn't act like Christians at school. So as I started looking to some of the seniors and juniors in high school, I don't remember um, that many uh, because I was new to the area. But two people that I do recall standing out at that time was Cherie Cutler, who is now Cherie Whitehurst, and, and David Whitehurst. And what stood out to me as a young impressionable freshman was that as a senior, both of those that were dating, they were both very humble. They lived the Christian walk and they weren't ashamed of it. They were humble. And about 10 years ago, um, we started to attend the, the church. And I can tell you from 1980, when I knew of them, until 2012, when we started attending their church, I can say that that humble spirit and community involvement didn't change. They were the same people and kept that same community and Christian attitude today. They didn't, that, that's un, unwavering faith. And that's the type of candidate that I want to see on the school board. I've had four children that have come through the, the Bedford County public education system. I've graduated from Bedford, uh, from Liberty High School. My wife graduated from Jefferson Forest High School. My kids have uh, graduated from, from Jefferson Forest High School since we're in uh, District 5 in Goud. Um, some of the concerns as a parent that I see is we're getting away from the Judeo-Christian values that have made our community and our country as great as they are. And we're seeing too many people for religious reasons or not, step away from the public education system. It will be refreshing to see someone that is going to bring those Christian values back to Bedford County or keep them. And that's why I would say my vote would go for, if I was you, Sheree Whitehurst. So thank you for your time and appreciate what you guys do. Thank you, Mr. Short. Tim Black. Madam Chair and members of the school board, I'm Tim Black. My address is 624 Mountain Avenue in District 6 in the town of Bedford. In addition to being a son of a teacher, a lifelong resident and taxpaying citizen, I'm the mayor of the town of Bedford. As we discuss the appointment of the vacant District 7 seat, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Martin Levy for his six years of service to our community. As you learn about the applicants for this appointment, I ask you to consider just two questions. Who is the most qualified and who does the community want to support? I'm here to enthusiastically and unequivocally support Dr. Sheree Whitehurst for this appointment. I believe there are four criteria that should make up a school board member. Their character, education, experience, and their reason for serving. I've known Sheree since I was a kid growing up with her brothers. She tried to keep us in line when we were young kids. <laughs> Don't know how she did, but anyway, we appreciate that even growing up. Uh, I've known her family for years. Her mom was an English teacher. Her dad was my government teacher and baseball coach. There's no family in Bedford County who has impacted our students and community as the Cutler family has. I know Cherie to be a strong, courageous Christian woman who is firm in her conservative convictions strong in her belief in our educational system and will be, will be able to stand up and make the difficult decisions in the face of adversity. She's proven that to our community. Mr. Smith, I applaud you for wanting to serve on the school board at such a young age. It's refreshing to see the, most, the next generation looking to get involved in our democratic process. Mr. Daniel, even though I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, I do appreciate you putting your name in the running. But in all due respect to the other applicants wishing to serve, there's no one more qualified to serve from both an educational perspective and the work experience and knowledge she can bring to this board. With a bachelor's degree in elementary education, a master's in educational leadership, 
and a doctorate in educational leadership and policy studies, there's no doubt she understands what it takes to have a successful school system. Cherie spent her career in our school system as a teacher, assistant principal or principal in all three school zones. Then served as administration as deputy superintendent for nine years. Her breadth of experience demonstrates she will have useful insight and knowledge of the issues in our school system. And she can use that expertise to help this board and the system's leadership work towards solutions that will best serve our students, our parents, our staff, and our community. I know Sheree is seeking this position because she has the desire to serve our community that she calls home. She is in this for all the right reasons with the goal of making Bedford County Public Schools the best school system in the Commonwealth of Virginia. She will be receptive to all the, the views of all the stakeholders as she deliberates on policy and procedures that affects the students and their parents in our schools. Everyone I've spoken to about this appointment knows that Sheree Whitehurst is the right person for this job. The District 7 seat encompasses half the town of Bedford, with the other half represented by Ms. Kirby. This support appointment is important to our community so that we can ensure fair representation for students and parents of the Liberty Zone. I'd like to publicly thank Dr. Whitehurst for attending our last town council meeting to discuss her vision and commitment to serving her constituents. After her presentation, she received overwhelming support from all seven council members during their comment period. The leadership of the town of Bedford has made their voice loud and clear who we believe should fill this seat. Ms. Kirby is the other representative that serves the town. I hope you're listening to our community and you will support Ms. Whitehurst as well. As you cast your vote to make this appointment, keep in mind the two questions I posed to you earlier. Who is most qualified and who does the community want? I believe Sheree Whitehurst is the applicant that meets those requirements and, that, and I ask that you live up to the obligation you have to represent the citizens of District 7 in this process and live up your, to your promises to listen to the community. If you don't mind at this time, I'd like everybody in the audience just to stand up that's important to read White Earth and stand with me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for allowing us to speak this evening. Thank you, Mayor Black. Ms. Woodson, the next three will be Eddie Zimmerman, Nathan Munson, and Sarah Mayhew. Hello, I'm a teach my name is Deborah Woodson and I'm a teacher in Bedford County Schools. I don't live in Bedford County. Is that okay? All right. Um, I've taught um, for 36 years and 25 of them have been here in um, Bedford County. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I want to speak ab about Raymond Smith. I want to speak to his um, two traits I think we ought to think about uh, with a person uh, as young as he is. One is his fresh perspective. He has a perspective that really isn't represented on your board. And um, his, his um, ability to be basically an old soul, even though he is very young. Um, and I think he could give us some help. Uh, I was lucky enough to teach him um, before he graduated. Um, he graduated in 2019, as he told you, and he's studying to be a teacher. And he's currently a junior at the University of Lynchburg, studying social studies and education. Um, he hopes to be a teacher here in Bedford County, and he has said this since he was um, much younger. He wanted to be a Bedford County teacher, and I think it's important because he wants to keep his talents and his time here in our, in our county. Um, and he has actually experienced um, the schools. He has given of his time and his talent um, in the actual schools during, co well, before COVID and then during COVID. Um, he was one of the few people who would willingly come in and help us in the trenches uh, when times were pretty tough. And we had a real challenge getting people to assist us. Um, and now he's still there as COVID is waning, he comes in and helps. He collaborates with us, um, as I said, giving of his time, uh, working with our students. Right now he's working with um, my students' debate skills. He's showing them how to write bills. 
um, and he demonstrates um, with them the argumentation uh, fallacies that they need to know. And he even chaperones field trips when we need him. Uh, he also coaches um, at JF on the debate team. So he gives of himself for our school system. He also worked on the Reimagining Education Committee twice. He served on the Superintendent Advisory um, Committee as a new graduate, as a recent graduate, excuse me. He was on the Finance Task Force, I can't imagine anything worse, during plans for reopening school in 2020. So he knows students and he knows school, the schools throughout the recent COVID experience and he still wants to be a part of our school system. But he's also an old soul. And what I mean by that is, yes, he has a fresh perspective. Yes, he's young. But he is one who, even though he's recently benefited from our services, he recognizes the value of them and has a willingness to want to help us continue those services with this world that we're currently navigating. His wisdom is in his ability to listen carefully consider, learn from others, his fairness in one so young, um, to make decisions and knowing what current life is like in the system right now in these unprecedented times. I saw his wisdom in my classroom, uh, in my AP Lit class, as he would have the ability to listen to everyone and then offer sagely his viewpoint. Um, I saw it in all the committees and task forces that we both worked on when listening was needed before ideas were generated. I see it in the collaboration and willingness to get involved in our schools with his in-depth thinking and planning. I think Raymond Smith would be an asset to our school system, um, an asset to our board. Thank you so much for letting me speak about a wonderful person. Thank you, Ms. Woodson. Mr. Zimmerman. I want to take this opportunity. I'm Eddie Zunnerman. I live at 3172 Morgan's Mill Road, and I'm in District 1. Miss Mealy's District of World, which I supported there for her when she ran there. You know, I spent 55 years in the Bedford County education system, 43 as a teacher and administrator, and 12 as a student. So I spent most of my life, I've seen the ups and downs. I've seen the good times, and I've seen the bad times in those 55 years that I spent in the education system. So I come to you tonight in support of Dr. Mealy. I mean, uh, Dr. Whitehurst, I'm sorry. I don't want to support her. I supported her once. That's enough, right, Susan? Now, Susan and I had a lot of battles across 24 when she was principal of Stewartsville, and I was a good view. But in Dr. Whitehurst, uh, you say, well, Eddie, why are you so interested in District 7? You're in District 1. And I will say this. I spent six years as principal at Faxton Elementary School. And I know the school is not there anymore, but there are still a great bunch of parents and students in that area, and I don't want them to be forgotten because they are very dear to me, and I still have a lot of communications there. And I feel Dr. Whitehurst would spend time listening to those students, listening to those parents, even though they don't have a school that drags them into anymore when Thaxton's gone. It really hurts when I drive by there and see a big garage door on the front of it. But let me say this about her. I thought, what would it take to be a good school board member? You've heard all kinds of things here today. All of her qualifications, I'm not getting into all of those. You can read those on her application. But first of all, she's been a long time resident of Bedford County. She knows the ups and downs of the school system. She knows when we had good times. She knows when we had bad times. And I support her for that. She's been a student. She's walked the very halls of the school right here. As a student, she knows what it's like to be a student in Bedford County school system. She's been a parent. She knows what it's like to be on the outside looking in as your children go to school here and how input you have. But one thing I think stands out about her, she's been in all three zones of Bedford County. She served in the Liberty Zone, the Forest Zone, and Stan River Zone. And I would encourage each one of you all as this COVID thing passes by to get out in other schools and other zones and see what's going on. As a principal, I always welcome school board members in my school because I was proud to show it off. So I'd encourage you to get out and do that. And th by having been in all three zones in Bedford County, she's had contacts with parents and students. 
and I feel they will be willing to listen to her, talk to her, and she will be willing to listen to their comments and suggestions. She's been central office, which she should know the curriculum, the financial report. She's been my boss. So I'll mail it right up front. She's been my boss. And when I came in there at times and I would sit down with her, our conversations always went back to one thing. And she would say, Eddie, what's best for the student? What's best for the student? No matter what it was. So I would encourage you for there. And, I, and you know, I know when you hit central office, your job is awful. And when you hit the school board members, it is tough. <laughs> it is tough. Because I know you're going to have to face in the near future the decline in enrollment of Bedford County. I think Dr. Whitehurst would be tremendously impacted in working with why parents don't want their students in Bedford County schools. You think about that, why they don't. I think our last I read was close to 1,500 students homeschooled in Bedford County. Why do those parents don't want you? There are schools popping up, private schools all over. I hardly ever go by churches and I see signs that says, enroll now for 22. We have K-5 and K-8. So why do parents not want their students in Bedford County schools? I think that's a big thing you're gonna have to face in the near future. And I think Dr. Whitehurst would give you some valuable information on that. Now coming from a different standpoint, I happen to be a parent of children that attended her school. She gave my oldest daughter her diploma. She handed it out to her from Staten River High School. And then needless to say, my oldest daughter's now in Seattle from where her husband's job's taken her. But I asked her the other night when she called, her name is Katie, I said, Katie, tell me about White, Dr. Whitehurst. And here's what she said. She said she's caring. She cared for every student at Stan River High School. No matter where they came from, where they're at, she cared for them. She said she was engaged in all the different activities, what it was the band, what it was the theater department, what it was the athletic department, she was engaged in it. But she said one thing that really struck me, she said she was willing to listen. And I think that characterized what a school board, maybe in short terms, you need to be caring for the students of Bedford County, you need to be engaged in the schools, the activities in Bedford County, and you need to be able to listen. And I'm gonna be honest with you, you need to be able to listen to the students. Students can tell you probably as much about their school as anybody. Now I'm not downgrading parents, because the parents have a good speech there, but students can tell you a lot. And when you come down to write down to think about it, where do the parents get most of their information? right from the students when they come home and tell them what's going on in their schools. So I would encourage you to support Dr. Whitehurst for this position on the school board. I think she'll make a worthy of candidate. She'll give you 100%, and I can guarantee pa uh, parents in, in District 7, your questions will be answered. It may be 12 and 1 o'clock in the night when she <laughs> shoots you an email, because uh, I've got those. Next morning when I walked in the office, she'd be to answer something I'd asked her at 12 or 1 o'clock at night and it opened up the email. She's a workaholic and she will do a great job as a person to sit on your board here in Bedford County School Board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. I'm going to remind the speakers that we have a four minute limit and if you hear the first bell, that is a 30 second warning. The second bell, please discontinue speaking and give any remaining comments to Ms. Johnson. Mr. Munson, sorry, Sarah. Oh, it's not me? Yeah, you're next. Uh, thank you, board, for allowing us to share our stories and offer our suggestions through your nomination process. My name is Nathan Munson. I'm the instructional tech coach at Jefferson Forest High School, and I'm a resident of Campbell County, so sadly I don't have an address to share. <laughs> um, uh, where I also coach debate as well. Um, I'm excited to share about someone who I've had the pleasure of working with and being friends with for over three years now, Raymond Smith. Raymond works with me as an assistant debate coach. Uh, he works specifically with our Congress team and honestly runs half the team <laughs> due to his knowledge of parliamentary procedures and his love of civic jargon. In his job, he throws every single aspect of himself into it, wasting no time or resources to ensure every student under his tutelage is prepared for upcoming tournaments. He shines as an educator and exudes a comfortability in the role of educator that many of us took years to accomplish in our own teaching lives. I have never met somebody his age uh, with the amount of wisdom, insight, and knowledge that he has in that noggin of his. 
Beyond the knowledge, Raymond speaks with kindness to every student on our team, constantly building them up and pushing them further than they believe they can go. One particular student this year reached out to me with worry about jumping onto the Congress team that Raymond leads. Yet after one practice, the student came back with a beaming smile exclaiming that Mr. Smith said he liked my bill. <laughs> and anyone who has ever worked in education knows that those light bulb moments where that kid just starts smiling at you, it means a difference. And when I see that kind of stuff, it reminds me of why he's on a team with me and why he leads these kids. In his time as my Congress coach, he has taken students with hidden abilities and given them a platform to shine in ways they never would have thought possible. I mean, God bless the man who can get students excited about writing bills and debating legislation. <laughs> but that's Raymond for you. As weird of a recommendation as that may sound, um, one of Raymond's defining traits goes far beyond education. Beyond being a debate coach, Raymond has ingrained himself in the school system. He is present in our students' lives because he has committed to serving all of them in numerous ways, not just as a sub, but as a debate coach. I mean, the list goes on. The man is at every single event possible. But I also want to talk about the fact that Raymond understands what it means to be a civil servant. There isn't a question I offered him where he doesn't dig through his mind palace of a brain and dredge up some law from the 1800s or jump on a phone call to some guy who I think can answer your question. While I make light of this, I'm serious when I say this ability to know things about our laws, understand the way our government works, and have a presence enough in our county to reach out for answers at the drop of a hat is something I believe any person running for this position should have at minimum. As constituents of this board, our duty is to suggest ideas and share our thoughts so that you can use what we know of our county, of our laws, of our schools, and help put things in motion to help all of us. I mean, I believe Raymond will fit into this role e easily and will provide a listening ear that is accompanied with actions that can be felt. Finally, Raymond doesn't have an agenda. In all my time knowing Raymond, I've always felt like he listens to every side of an argument. Don't let his southern draw fool you. He isn't just some country boy. This is a man who views every problem from all sides, coming only to his decision by what helps the most people. He can run circles around anyone with the knowledge he acquires just to answer a single question. It has happened many times. The man out talks me, and I am a talker. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stress enough that all, any, all forms of government need more people who step into office with the people's desires in mind, instead of those of one side of the aisle. We need voices that speak for everyone, and a school board is a wonderful place for such a person. Raymond Smith has my highest recommendation for this position, and I believe he will serve not only his district, but this entire community with kindness, diligence, and understanding. I hope you'll take my words into consideration when selecting your candidate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Munson. Ms. Mayhew. The next three will be Amy Spangenberg, Carrie Dodge, Aaron Reed. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak and thank each of you for your service. Um, it's so very much appreciated and just under thanked, I know. Um, my name is Sarah Mayhew and I live at 2101 Kelso Mill Road in District 7. Um, I have three children. The two oldest are twins in ninth grade here at Liberty High School and the youngest is in sixth grade at Liberty Middle. I'm here tonight to speak in support of Sheree Whitehurst. Seven years ago, our neighborhood school of Thaxton Elementary was put on the chopping block. I became very active in the effort to save our school. Even though it was ultimately closed, I learned many things and got to know many people that still remain invaluable to me today. My eyes were widened in learning about the workings of our school system. Mostly, I became more aware of the need to speak up as a parent for what's important, which is why I'm here. When it was announced that an interim board member would need to be found for District 7, I immediately considered running myself. However, after hearing that Cherie was running and a lot of prayer, I decided to support her 100%. Cherie has served our county for nearly 30 years, a teacher for seven, an assistant principal for four, a principal for nine, deputy superintendent for another nine. <laughs> she worked in all three zones in her time. She not only worked as an outstanding employee for the school system, but always strived to put the students' needs first while empathizing with teachers and staff in all areas. I have heard from countless students of whom she made the biggest difference. Her knowledge of how a school system is run is comprehensive. She is not only a parent and a grandparent, but she's a Liberty High School graduate. 
someone who is very familiar with the community she'd serve. She's a retired teacher, principal, administrator that understands the viewpoint from each angle with the goal of making sure our students receive the very best education in her hometown. When Thaxton closed, her heart broke as ours did. But she wants our voices to be heard even though our school closed. The most important thing to understand about Cherie is that she is eager to listen and to respond to our needs. Not to just those whose personal opinions align with hers. Cherie has a sincere heart for this community and is eager to do good for it. Her track record in and of itself proves her stand up, work ethic, and high values. She continues to have a vested interest and she is who I trust to represent my children. I urge you to support Sheree Whitehurst for District 7. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mayhew. <laughs> Ms. Spangenberg. Thank you. My name is Amy Spangenberg, and I am in District 5 at Greenway Trail in Forest. Um, I'd like to say a few words tonight about our friend Raymond Smith. Raymond has been a friend of our family and my daughter Allison for about six years. We got to know him at Jefferson Forest High School in the world of Cavalier Theater, where he and Allison found roles in both cast and crew for various productions and performances. I believe Raymond and Allison became friends because of some shared personality traits. I think they are both quiet observers as well as problem solvers. This theory of mine was confirmed when they both became recipients of Cavalier Theater's most prestigious award given by the director for outstanding performance, both on and off stage. Raymond's award was given in 2019 and Allison's in 2020. Um, I call them quiet observers not because he doesn't have a lot to say, but because he knows that you can learn more by listening than by talking. So that's what he does. He listens and he observes and in doing so discovers the needs of those around him. As a problem solver, he innovates creative solutions to problems in his community, whether it's simply giving a friend a ride, helping a cast member run lines, or become a teacher for Bedford County, Raymond is always there to fill a need. My daughter Allison, who said I could quote her, said, Raymond is the most helpful human being I know. He's always willing to do what he can when someone needs help. He shows up ready to do whatever. Which brings me to this evening. Raymond really, really wants to serve on this school board because he wants to serve the greatest number of people in the most efficient way by discussing issues facing his district with others who care just as much as he does that the best interests of the students are upheld and the needs of all families are met. His enthusiasm for this position is admirable. And if District 7 wants a representative who is an enthusiastic observer and a creative problem solver, Raymond Smith is their man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Dodge. My name is Carrie Dodge. I live at 105 Salem Drive, District 4. I'm the librarian at Jefferson Forest High School, and I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Raymond Smith, who is running for the 7th District School Board seat. I've known Raymond for several years, and in this time, I have seen Raymond grow from a shy high schooler who found his voice in theater to a determined college student who is wise beyond his years. Raymond has found a home in the library, whether volunteering or just needing a quiet place to read. Throughout his high school career, he was always offering to help in the library in a variety of ways, even though he had no obligation. This is the kind of person Raymond is, always willing to help others and lend a helping hand. During his senior year, Raymond signed up to be a library intern. True to who Raymond was and still is, he always went above and beyond his assigned responsibilities as an intern. He not only fulfilled all of his class requirements, but he also took it upon himself as an extra task for the year to organize and inventory the English department book closet. This was no small feat. We still use Raymond's inventory to this day. He showed great organizational skills, self-motivation, great communication, and follow through during this time in the library. I wish I could have students in the library every year that embodied all that Raymond brought to us. Raymond is also at Jefferson Forest High School most days working with the debate team after school. 
When he's not showing off his amazing debate skills, he can be found substitute teaching at the high school and middle schools. He is also a full-time student at the University of Lynchburg, taking a full load of classes. He volunteers when time allows with the JF Theater program, helping the Whites do anything and everything to bring a show to light. The students look up to Raymond, and he is a great resource to them. He listens, and he truly cares about each and every one of them, and they respect him as a person, but also as a mentor. In closing, you can't go wrong with Raymond in your classroom, on your staff, in your cast, as a friend, or on your school board. Raymond is dedicated as they come. He is passionate about this community and all that comes with it. He educates himself on the issues, always going the extra mile to fully understand the topic at hand. He is excited to share his knowledge with the younger generation and help them learn. You would be hard pressed to find anyone as hardworking and determined as Raymond. This young man has a heart of gold and a desire for good well beyond his years. And I urge you to give Raymond Smith a chance. You, he will not let you down. Thank you, Ms. Dodge. Mr. Reed, the next three will be Amy Carter, Jenny Ogden, Charlotte Maxey. Good evening, my name is Aaron Reed. I live in District 5. I'm a parent to students in Bedford County Public Schools. I have a senior and a freshman who attend Jefferson Forest High School, and tonight I am here to speak on behalf of Raymond Smith. I've known Raymond for several years in a variety of settings, and I believe that he is the best candidate for this position. Now you already know Raymond is a graduate of Bedford County Schools and Jefferson Forest High School. You know that he is an active and engaged member of his community, you've heard all of that. What you may not know is the way that he connects to communities and school systems outside of Bedford. And having him as one of the faces of Bedford County Schools is an absolute win for the students and the staff who work at our schools as well as the parents who are represented here tonight. Raymond was an active member of Cavalier Theater during his time as a student. He traveled with that team to competitions around the state, as well as putting on top-notch performances right here at home. As a performer, Raymond received rave reviews from his fellow actors and actresses, as well as his directors. But more than that, when he was at those theater festivals, he was really an ambassador for Bedford County Public Schools. And as such, he was encouraging to all the performers who were there, even if they were his competition. He was genuinely curious about students and schools that he had never met before. He was gracious to everyone. You cannot hold a 30 second conversation with Raymond without a deep respect for his professionalism and empathy. Raymond was also an accomplished debater as a student. I run a local high school speech and debate league here in Central Virginia, and Raymond has come to my school with his team on more than one occasion to compete in student congress. During those tournaments, I have memories of overhearing students and coaches from other schools and other divisions heap accolades on Raymond for his polished demeanor, his professional status, and his deep well of gratitude for just the chance to participate. At the end of our league season for his senior year, all the members of the Student Congress voted Raymond unanimously to receive the Gavel Award, recognizing his professional demeanor in those chambers. But Raymond is not a high school student anymore. So what aspects of his current life suggest him for the role on this school board? Here's one among many. Raymond has returned to his experience in the debate world by helping us run our local speech and debate tournaments this year. He works with debate coaches around the area to organize and execute these competitions so that students, our students, can have the kinds of experience and support that he had. That's what Raymond is. He's the guy who gives back to his community wholeheartedly. And that's also what makes him the right person for this board. On a final note, as a teacher myself, the one thing that I would say is that if you want to know what's going on in a school today, ask the substitute teachers, man. <laughs> ask them what they've experienced and what they hear, because they know firsthand exactly what's going on in the classroom. 
Raymond is someone that you and I can count on to listen, truly listen to the concerns of the community and proceed accordingly. He thinks critically, he speaks thoughtfully, and he acts in all things professionally. I hope you will see Raymond for the man of good character that he is and select him as the board member. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Amy Carter. Are you Ms. Carter? Oh, okay. Okay. Amy Carter. Jenny Ogden. Good evening. My name is Jenny Ogden, and I've been a resident of Bedford County for my whole life. My address is 102 Maplewood Drive in Forest, and I'm in District 4. Um, I'm a graduate of New London Academy and Jefferson Forest High School. I went to Forest Middle School. We were in the basement of Jefferson Forest. Um, I've been a teacher for 24 years, and I've spent 19 of those in Bedford County. And all of my children are either current students or former students in Bedford County schools. I'm here tonight to speak in support of Raymond Smith. I've known Raymond for about five years, and um, we met each other in, in the hallways of Jefferson Forest. Um, my classroom used to be on a hallway, which was a bustling place, and so we would see each other after he had competitions or they would be mentioned in the announcement, some of his performances or seeing him on the theater. So we got to know each other, and he's a good friend of, um, of my son's. Um, and I believe he'll be a great asset to the county as a member of the school board. I believe that he will be three things. He'll be supportive, invested, and committed. When Raymond was a student, as you've heard, he was a member of the debate team, the SCA, and the theater program. He represented our school with, and county with integrity at competitions and worked with other students in the SCA to plan school-wide events that involve the entire student body. He knows how to work in a team and to get things done. After he graduated in 2019, Raymond came back to Bedford County Schools to support our students. He supports them as a debate coach at JF, and as he's told you, and as you've heard before, um, as a substitute teacher in various schools in Bedford County. He's currently working on his history and social studies education major at the University of Lynchburg. As a future teacher, he's invested. He's invested in education and will provide great input and insight um, from, educate, from an educator's point of view. Raymond has always shown enthusiasm for education and caring for others, from dressing up as Santa for the students at Otter River year after year, to taking on the role as a substitute teacher and a coach. Raymond has shown he's committed to the students, teachers, and to the future of Bedford County Public Schools. So I hope that you will choose him as your board member. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Agnew. Ms. Maxey, the next three will be Christina Childress, Brian Allen, Heather Woodford. Hi, my name is Charlotte Maxey. I live at 5050 Chestnut Fork Road in Bedford, Virginia, in District 2. I worked in Bedford County for many, many years as a teacher, and I was also a foster mom of over 20 kids. I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Whitehurst when she was the dep deputy superintendent with some of my foster kids. Many of them had IEPs. Dr. Whitehurst always made time for me and my foster sons. I kept the teenage kids, teenage boys were my favorite. She patiently listened and to the concerns and she found ways to support them no matter what they had done. Dr. Whitehurst not only helped me and my sons with our concerns, but she tried to listen to many others in the community. I know you all are tired of hearing all these things, and I appreciate your attention. That's what we're here for. A, a few years ago, the school board voted to close Body Camp Elementary and Thaxton Elementary School. The parents made their voices known, and, every, and we did everything we could to stop them from closing the small, intimate schools. After the school board failed to listen to the community and close the schools, there were many problems at schools that our children went to. 
at Mont Bell, there was not enough room for all the new students. And we wonder why nobody wants to have the kids in Bedford. Think about it. The teacher's lounge had to be turned into a classroom. The art teacher, the art teachers had to travel by rolling carts. Many teachers had to travel by rolling carts. The remediation room where students were taught individually that was taken away from the students and turned into a regular classroom. This was overcrowding again. The Head Start trailer was smaller than a regular classroom. The teachers did not even have room enough for the students to lay down and take a nap. The Pre-K and Head Start students had no overhead walkways. They got rained on getting from one from their, their classroom to the main building. Do you see why we don't want to have our kids in Bedford County? We need help. We really need help. Dr. Whitehurst knows how to do this. She's a very good person for the job. She knows the ins and outs of this community and of this situation. The communities were in shock at how overcrowded the schools were and then devastated to learn that to save money for closing two schools was used to hire more people in the central office. Dr. Whitehurst listened to the voices of the community and advocated for them, but she was ignored then. She put the needs of others above her own needs just to speak out. The community is now standing up for Dr. Whitehurst and asking that you hear our voices and select her for the District 7 vacancy. Please do the right thing. You know she is qualified. You know she can come up with all the right answers for you. She's well respected, and we need her. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Maxey. Good student Childers. Hi, I'm Christina Childress. Um, I live in Marigold Drive in Goodview, I'm District 1. Um, tonight I speak as a graduate of BCPS, a current educator in the division and as a parent of a BCPS student. If we are gonna promote parent choice, I just like to say that I'm a parent and I choose Dr. Whitehurst. Dr. Whitehurst is probably one of the only residents of this district about whom nobody could say anything disparaging because that's how she has always lived her life and how she spent her career fully above reproach. Dr. Whitehurst has always given of her time, compassion, courage, and dignity to every single student, staff member, and parent she has encountered in Bedford County. Dr. Whitehurst's resume and experience speak for themselves. There's simply no one is qualified to be part of a school board who has the power to set policy, evaluate, provide feedback, and hire and fire every staff member in the school division. But power is not on her agenda and it never has been. Many people talk of respect, but Dr. Whitehurst lives it. She is the best we have ever seen at making all stakeholders feel valued, even if she disagreed with them. And as she always is the first to ask for parent, student, and staff member voices, to be heard during her long career. Dr. Whitehurst is a servant leader who has always been responsive to concerns from her staff and her community. The fact that she answered the call to apply for this interim board position shows that responsiveness as obviously an overwhelming number of current and former staff as well as community members practically begged her to apply. We did this because we know what kind of person she is. She is exactly the type of person the BCPS school board needs to help ensure that our students are provided the very best education possible. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Childers. Mr. Allen. My name is Brian Allen. I live on 1304 Oakwood Street, located in District 7. I, like many of you, am fortunate to call Bedford a lifelong home and even more blessed to have been a student here at Liberty High School from 2006 to 2010. Something unique about my first year here at Liberty was that it was Dr. Whitehurst's first year back at the same high school she graduated from, mm -hmm. serving as the role as, prin as principal. The previous years, she served as assistant principal at JF 
and both assistant principal and principal at Stanton River. Experience is just one of the many elements parents and citizens want to see encompassed by their local school board, but even more so, we want to be heard. As class president my freshman year, I was fortunate enough to have had many opportunities to work and grow alongside Dr. Whitehurst. There's one situation in particular that has stayed with me for over 15 years. At the beginning of my freshman year, myself and other class officers were approached by several athletes wanting to know more about the nutritional value of our school lunch options. This being new territory for all of us, we weren't sure where to begin. A few of us approached Dr. Whitehurst seeking guidance on how to address this on behalf of our fellow classmates. We were looking for basic information, such as a name, a contact number. The very next morning, she guided us by helping us compose a letter to Bedford County requesting more information on this topic. The very next week, I found myself, along with class officers from each grade, sitting at a round table discussion inside of her office with Bedford County's nutrition specialist. Together, we worked on ways to keep athletes and students alike informed about the nutritional value of our school lunch choices. When we followed up with our peers who brought us these questions, they couldn't believe how quickly we were able to act. Our answer to that was easy. You can thank our principal. Rather than simply answering our question, Dr. Whitehurst took the time to teach us the process of listening and reacting to concerns in a timely and most importantly, a professional manner. This memory I have was, and still is, symbolic of Dr. Whitehurst's approach to all aspects of education. She listened, she paid attention, she wanted to be directly involved in educating us, not simply point us in the right direction. She made sure we hit the finish line together. I recall during the student council session following that meeting with Dr. Whitehurst, my upperclassmen, especially the seniors, were wishing they could start high school over again because <laughs> they never before had witnessed their principal, their leader, listen and react so quickly. But it made us all wonder and realize, if this was her response over the concerns of a few, imagine the effort and commitment she's demonstrating at even higher levels for us all. Fortunately for myself and others, that question was answered in tenfold the following year. By that I mean, in 2007, Liberty High School was recognized by achieving adequate yearly progress. More specifically, our high school had never made federal accreditation or adequate yearly progress in its history. And Dr. Whitehurst changed that after only being principal for one year. As a proud former student of Cherie Whitehurst, it is with utmost confidence that I recommend her for District 7 Bedford County School Board position. Not only do I want her in that position, but I know for a fact that we all need her for the future of Bedford County students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Heather Woodford. Next three, Timothy Minky, Mark Day, Thomas Fox. Just to clarify, my last name is Fariola. Sorry, Woodford was my maiden name. Um, I am a mother to three children here in Bedford County and I have three stepchildren also that attend Bedford County schools. Um, one of my children is um, part of the special education program at Bedford Primary so I have great interest in special education as well as typical developing education. Um, I came tonight to share with you a little bit about why I feel you should elect Chris Daniels to represent District 7 on the school board. Chris has shown over the past eight to nine months how committed he is to our ch children by being present during the election process as well as at every school board meeting since August. Recently, our country seems to have forgotten that the first priority of our elected officials should be to serve their constituents. With the climate we're in, we cannot afford to have even one elected official forget their purpose. In November, Chris showed up at the polls to feed all those of us that were working. This is not only a display of his commitment to the community, but is also a display of his heart to serve. Our community has made it loud and clear that we want our children's best interests taken into consideration with regards to their education and school environment. Chris has repeatedly advocated for these changes by showing up and being present. He believes parents have the right to choose what is best for their children, and that is our God-given responsibility. As a business owner, Chris is familiar with problem solving and hard work. He has invested in our school system because he has two children who, whom attend Bedford County Public Schools. With his children being in the school, he's in tune with the current climate of the schools and could provide good insight to the board. 
Being a special needs parent, Chris has a diverse understanding of many areas within our school system, areas of success and areas that are needing improvement. He can offer wisdom and insight into, the, into his own children's experiences to advocate, advocate for improvements. With all that said, um, I believe Chris Daniels is the best choice to fill a position on the school board. Thank you, Ms. Woodford. Mr. Minky. My name is uh, Tim Meinke. I'm a resident Sorry. of Lynchburg, Lynchburg City. Um, um, so I'm not a voter here, but i um, interested to use my time tonight to recommend Mr. Raymond Smith for the empty uh, seat, District 7 seat on the uh, Bedford County School Board. I've had the privilege of getting to know Raymond over the last few years at the University of Lynchburg as he's taken a few of my classes, such as American National Government this semester and state and local politics last semester. In each class, Raymond has earned top grades, been a thoughtful participant, and continually impressed me with his knowledge of the subject matter. Yet more impressive is his humility towards pursuing knowledge. He does not think he knows everything, and he is open to learning from others. This quality of character will be helpful as you're confronted with many issues and topics on a school board such as this. Raymond also exhibits an impressive commitment to public service. He realizes there are duties and responsibilities to citizenship, more than just benefits and blessings. He also realizes that those blessed with talents must serve to make their communities better. It is this commitment which opens a public servant up to the virtue of being able to put their own self-interest aside for the good of the community. And it is for these two reasons especially, as well as others, his humility towards pursuing the truth and his commitment towards public service that I recommend Mr. Raymond Smith for this very important position. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Day. My name is Mark Day. My address is 104 Mulberry Place. That is a Lynchburg address. However, I live in the Boonesboro section of Bedford County, which is in District 5. Chairman Kirby, Member Nelms, I remember teaching you. <laughs> this evening I've heard a lot of people state <clears throat> that uh, they want someone who will listen to a parents and will listen to the students. I also heard somebody make a comment that inferred that a professional educator, a person who had been an educator, uh, may not be the most qualified candidate. Well, that may be. There may be educators out there that are not qualified candidates. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that every educator should be on a school board. But in the case of Cherie Whitehurst, I believe that she is the perfect educator candidate. My children graduated from both JF and this school, and I taught at this school, this very good and great school for 22 years as a history teacher. It's been my honor and my privilege to know Cherie Whitehurst for more than 25 years. And during those 25 years, my experiences with her have ranged from those of parent. She was the assistant principal at JF when my daughter was in the eighth grade and we had a couple of conversations because my daughter had a few moments that needed to be addressed. <laughs> okay. Um, and of course, my, I knew her here. I was her employee, a, a teacher who worked for her. But I've also known her as a concerned citizen of this county, a man who cares deeply about the success of the children of this county the teachers in this county, and the support staff in this county. I've worked in this school, as I said, for 22 years. 
I sincerely believe the decision that is being made to fill the District 7 seat is one of the most critically important decisions you, as a school board, will make in this year. There are many reasons why I feel that way, but the most important of them revolves around the students of this county. Bedford County, like so many other school systems in Virginia, has been passing through an often confusing and turbulent time. We have faced situations which sometimes led to confrontation <coughs> and disunity within our community. And those tensions have sometimes divided us. What we need now is stability and reason within the deliberations of this body. Our children deserve nothing less than that. Over the years of working and serving with and learning from Ms. Whitehurst, I can state one unequivocal fact. She has demonstrated great dedication and commitment to her work with children in the past and will in the future have the, have the welfare and future success of every student in her care at the center of her focus as a member of this school board if she is chosen. I do not doubt there will be one minute of the day where she ever falters in that dedication to our children and grandchildren, nor will there be a time when she makes a decision without considering first the impact on the children to whom she has been charged to provide safe, secure, and most importantly, a quality education. Let me end with the following. Every parent or employee relationship I've had with Ms. Whitehurst she has proven herself to be a consummate professional in the very demanding and taxing field of public education. I believe her record of dedication to her students in Bedford County can be traced all the way through all of the years that she has been in this system. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Day. Mr. Fox, the next three will be Kathy Sievers, Steve Overstreet, and Chuck Allison. My name is Thomas Fox. I live at 1214 Hampton Ridge here in the town of Bedford in District 7. I've been an educator for 35 years, coached 49 seasons of high school and middle school sports, and have spent the last 19 in Bedford County. 19 years, seven principals. You do the math. I was fortunate to have Dr. Whitehurst as a principal for three years. Someone asked me to define her in one word or less, and I used the word smooth, wrinkle-free. <laughs> you say, is that a compliment? Absolutely. Okay. Many of the people who have come to this podium in the last several years have an agenda about the me world. It's all about me. The agenda is focused to one standpoint. I want to change that. I want to call it the we agenda. Who are the we's? The teachers in this county who are often overlooked. The principals, assistant principals, the guidance counselors, the bus drivers, the cafeteria workers, and the janitors. I'm sorry, we're not heard from enough. All the focus has been on everything else but us. Cherie is part of the we focus. What I know in the last 15 years of being associated with her is that she does listen and she is experienced. Let me finish this. Let me ponder this to you. Suppose tomorrow you find out that you need emergency surgery to save your life. You have two choices. Plan A, you have this perfect person who just got out of medical school, straight A's, completed all their training, or plan B, somebody who's been in the field of medicine for 30 years and done this surgery hundreds of times. Which one would you pick? As we say in the trade, that's pretty much Captain Obvious. <laughs> the experience alone as an educator for the people who've been in education on the school board, I have my hats off to you. I'm sorry, if you've never been in the classroom other than the 12 years you spent in school, there's a piece missing representing what's going on in the classroom now. Cherie understands that, as many of you do. Okay? I hope that you will see her for everything else that she is and what everybody has spoken about her. There's no doubt she is the most experienced, qualified for this position. I thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Fox. <laughs> Kathy Sievers. Okay. Don't see Kathy out there. Mr. Overstreet. I'll be happy to take her extra minutes. <laughs> uh, Steve Overstreet, uh, Fancy Farm Road, Bedford, Virginia, District 7. Uh, I'm going to get right to it, and I'm going to do a little bit of the selfishness, Fox, but not so much selfishness. Um, sitting back and trying to keep my mind open, I'm an analyst. Christopher sounds great. Randall, you sound great. You've got a good team there. But we've got to address the pronouns in the room. We've got to address the bathrooms in the room. All the stupid stuff that we want to forget about that have become part of the education process. This is being in the trenches. I'm going to obviously go for my classmate, Cherie Whitehurst, or Dr. Whitehurst. Yay. Um, got to show a little enthusiasm for you. Anyway, I trust her. She's loyal. That's why she put money on a candidate. Somebody said, oh, well, why did they do that? Well, you know what? It showed loyalty, OK? I would rather bank on somebody. I know Stacy Haley, I know Kevin Willis, I know the mayor and everybody. We don't always think alike. I definitely don't think like them, they don't think like me. But I support them. Why? Because I can count on them being consistent. They have a following, all right? We've got to get this board shored up. We've got it. We're in crisis. There are things out there right now that are trying to pull us apart. And the only way we can win our country back is our communities. And our churches and our schools are those communities, our neighborhoods. Now, like I said, guys, I'm not trying to beat you up, Randall, and I'm not trying to beat up Christopher. But right now, Fox is right. If I'm gonna get a surgery, I've gotta pick the one I feel that can do the job right now. And that is Cherie. Now, we have to just do, uh, you've gotta consider that. Um, I've been an analyst for so many years, I can't think any other way. So I chop it down and I try to open my mind. Randall, don't give up your pursuits, buddy, because I think you've got the next hope for us, okay? Cherie's getting old. <laughs> All right. Christopher, huh? Rand, oh, I'm sorry. But uh, Mr. Smith, there we go. And then Christopher, uh, your, your charismatic approach and everything and the, your people that are following you, I think you're gonna build a good team there too. But right now, uh, we're in the fire, and we need somebody like Cherie holding everybody accountable. I work in transit. I can tell you it's as closest thing to being a school teacher as possible. Federal regulations, state regulations, local regulations, union, we got it, they got it. And you have to be a, a lawyer, which is lucky for her, she's married to one, uh, <laughs> to figure this stuff out. So you're not just getting Cherie, you're getting her family her experiences, and her dedication. Why she would do what she does, it beyond me. But I am 100% for Cherie. I support her, I supported David, they've been my best friends, and I believe in them, even if I don't agree with them some days. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Overstreet. <laughs> Mr. Allison, the next three will be Dave Dietrich, Susan Lyle, Amy Sneed. Hello, my name is Chuck Allison. I live in District 3, address is 1695 Colony Heights Road in Goode. I um, was raised in Bedford County and graduated from here at Liberty. Um, my wife and I settled in, in New London and had three daughters graduate from Jefferson Forest. First, I'd like to thank you, the board members, the current board members. Thank you for your service. Um, I'd also like to thank these three candidates. <coughs> I, can't, I think we all feel fortunate, good gracious. You know, we're blessed to have people that want to serve like you. And the qualifications of these candidates, it's pretty impressive, and their passion. Um, that said, like most residents of, of Bedford County, um, growing up here, we're all aware of the, uh, the positive influence for the community and the schools, for, of the Cutler family, and of course, Cherie's cut from that cloth, is that cloth, and, yeah, I stand here tonight asking for your support for the most accomplished Mrs. and Dr. Cherie Whitehurst. Um, to me, she's clearly the most qualified, uniquely qualified 
and uh, can offer perspective that's unmatched by the others. Um, she will strengthen your board, augment your board, and um, I ask for your support for her. And as, as a parent, as a resident, just the, you know, the questions that you know, was asked before, what, what do the children need and what do we want? It's just so simple, I, you, know, it's, um, you know, we need to allow our teachers to teach and to discipline so that they can maintain an atmosphere that's conducive for learning, an environment that feels secure and safe for the children and for the teachers. And we want a curriculum that's wholesome and relevant and rigorous and truthful. And I think Dr. Whitehurst can aid us, aid you in that goal. And we also want that for all the schools in Bedford County. Again, I thank you all for your service and your time, and I ask for your support for Dr. Shree Whitehurst. Thank you, Mr. Allison. Mr. Dietrich. Good evening. I'm Dave Dietrich. I'm uh, from uh, 1064 Amanda Court in Forest, Virginia, and that's District 4. And, uh, you know, the late Admiral Crowell used to say that Politics can be found in everything. And Jimmy Madison once wrote, faction is sown into the very heart of man. And what I would like to talk about as we talk about the candidates is to look at the real politic of things, all right, the politics. And here's the deal. We have a consistent voting pattern on the board and that pattern seems to be focused on two factions. One is, are the folks that have the educational credentials and background, and others that do not are from other parts of um, activities. If we look at the, the pro-administrative voting and the pro-parent voting, we find that originally we had a uh, a five to two vote and then it switched over to four to three and so it with whoever we get on this board they're going to be because they're human because of their backgrounds and regardless of whether they're good they're all going to be good but they're going to be motivated by their backgrounds and what their interests are, just like everybody else. And so we have candidates that have educational backgrounds, and we have candidates that do not. And if you look at Chris Daniels, for example, he's got skin in the game. His kids go to this, uh, this education, the board of um, Bedford County, okay? He also is a manager so he can think analytically and using critical thinking. He can bring those skills here. What he doesn't have is he does not have a background in education. And that's exactly what we need because we have too much of the former in the system now. And the system is skewed as a result. We can know that. How do we know that analytically? We know that by the way people vote. Simple as that. And so if we want to protect the interests of the parents, we have to consider that. If we want to protect the interests of the, the educators, then we might want to consider going a different route. Now, I'm not up here trying to paint a picture that you know one group is good, one group is bad. Everybody's a fine person. The people we heard about tonight, every one of them seems to be a very fine person. But the reality is we're dealing with politics and we have to come to that realization that we have to consider that in the calculus as we determine who should be on this board. There are very significant things at stake here. And I don't mean to sound preachy, but, and I'm trying to be dispassionate, but I am somewhat passionate about it. 
because there is so much at stake, especially in the age of ideas that are not vetted by anybody else but educators coming down. First there's critical theory, then there's critical race theory, and now there's culturally responsive teaching. What's the next ism coming down the road? That's something we have to consider. Thank you. Mr. Dietrich. Susan Lau. Sorry? I just oh, said thank oh, you. Okay. Good evening. Um, my name is Susan Lyle. I'm a current educator. I teach at Goodview Elementary. I'm also a Bedford County resident. I live on uh, Shingle Block Road in District 3. Um, we've known Cherie Whitehurst for many, many years, my husband and I both. And although she's being considered for the District 7 school board vacancy, we both feel that she would be the best candidate. When I started teaching for Bedford County Schools, Dr. Whitehurst was the principal at Stanton River High School, my alma mater. My husband had the privilege of working as a principal in the Liberty Zone when Dr. Whitehurst became the principal at Liberty High School. My husband and I also got to know Dr. Whitehurst even more once she became the assistant superintendent and later deputy superintendent. As his immediate supervisor, my husband had nothing but the utmost respect. And I think you guys have heard that word many, many times tonight, respect. She was available always to support the principals, with the daily rewards and challenging challenges of leading schools. Once Dr. Whitehurst became the deputy superintendent, I appreciated the time and effort that the entire instructional team spent in schools and classrooms. I can remember personally seeing her coming out to schools, even on Halloween days. Those are the worst days to visit. And she, she came right on in and enjoyed every moment of it. So, I think just even the fact that the teachers really appreciated her is something that you guys um, really need to, to you know, take into consideration. Um, she had an objective when she visited the schools and that objective was clear. It was to improve the academic achievement for all students in all the schools. In fact, under Dr. Whitehurst's leadership, schools in the Liberty and Stanton River zones that were not accredited increased their standards of learning test results and earned accreditation. This was an incredible accomplishment given that several of these schools had been under sanctions with the Office of School Improvement at the VDOE for many years. As a community member, who has lived and worked in Bedford County almost her entire life, Dr. Whitehurst is invested in the success of the entire school division. She has and will continue to dedicate her time and efforts to the students, staff, parents, and community. My husband and I cannot think of anyone better than Dr. Cherie Whitehurst to serve as the next District 7 school board member. Thank you all for your consideration of this most worthy candidate. Thank you, Ms. Law. Ms. Need. the next three will be Stephen Smith, Stephen Elam, and Jen Lazowski. I don't think I'll need my full four minutes and y'all have had a long night, so if you need to stretch, <laughs> go ahead. I'm sure you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose tonight. Good evening, my name is Amy Sneed and I am a resident of District 7 and also the chapter chair of Moms for Liberty Bedford County. As you know, our organization stands firmly planted in advocating for parental rights at all levels of government and education. As we are a nationally spanning grassroots organization, over the last election cycle, our organization created a survey to help vet the candidates running for school board positions. We're in a unique circumstance here this week with um, the situation that we face. And so in order to garner the support of Moms for Liberty, 
We need to fully understand where each candidate stands on the issues that are vitally important to our members. Each of the three candidates was sent a 17 question survey. For example, some of the questions asked are, do you believe parents have the fundamental right to determine the upbringing, education, and care of their children? Do you believe a parent, um, excuse me, have you read the Constitution in the course of the last year? Um, do you believe the legitimate role of government is li limited and should be confined to what is clearly defined by the Constitution? Do you support school choice measures? Those sorts of questions. We were pleased that each candidate completed the survey in a very timely manner. The surveys were shared with our executive team members to be voted upon. We also conducted research that might be pertinent to understanding each of the candidates. After reading the surveys and voting, our chapter voted to endorse Chris Daniels for the District 7 seat. In a county where the November election results overwhelmingly shown a commitment to candidates who champion parental rights and a deep level of involvement with parents regarding the education and upbringing of their children, this endorsement supports what our community has already spoken loudly for. We admire and respect each of the candidates and their desire to serve our community. However, Mr. Daniels emerged as the strongest candidate to align with the values of our organization and its over 200 local members. We would ask that the board continue to stand with the voices of the citizens of Bedford County and maintain the positive trajectory that began earlier this year. It only takes walking outside the doors of this building and glancing across town to the D-Day Memorial to remind us of the liberty-loving area in which we live. As our delegate Wendell Walker told me recently, we are not done standing for liberty and freedom. I would ask you, the current school board members, to join Mobs for Liberty in support of Chris Daniels for District 7. We are grateful for your tireless work for our students, parents, teachers, and staff, and we anticipate many more good things to come for the future of our county. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Ms. Neal. <laughs> Stephen Smith. Hello, my name is Stephen Smith, and I live in Forest, uh, 102 Deer Track Drive. I'm here to endorse Chris Daniels for school board because I believe he will be a positive impact on the school board. He's worked with many different people that have very diverse backgrounds through his work. Um, and the fact that he's progressed and advanced in his career shows that all he's he's done and, and he's listened and learned from other people as well. He has been involved with his kids, uh, with the school teachers and aides because he really cares about his boy's education, being a single parent. His business, business experience will help with budgeting and expenses involved. I feel strongly that parents with kids in the schools will have positive feedback from their children. Examples, letting the, letting the parents know the issues and problems that occur during the day. Um, our grandchild has, has had different issues of playing um, music in the gym with well, there's swear, swear words and crazy stuff like that. And, um, and um, also teachers talking about their sexual orientation and things like that. Um, we, did, we did get involved. We, my wife spoke with the principal and got things resolved, spoke to the teachers. And that's, that's what things... That's what happens that, you know, has to happen. Students are the eyes and ears of what's really happening in schools. And, um, you know, Chris Daniels will listen to all the parents which have listened to their own children firsthand. For all these reasons, I think he will be great at representing students and parents of Forest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Elam. 
Good evening. I'm Dr. Steve Elam. I am uh, from, uh, I live at 1807 Meadow Down Drive. I believe that's dis District 6 here in Forest. <clears throat> I am a parent of a uh, 2019 graduate, Zachariah Elam, and a 2021 graduate, Samantha Elam. And I have an eight year old who has Down syndrome who goes to TJ. Um, my son is one of Raymond's best friends. Um, Raymond spends a lot of time at our house. Uh, he's a trusted, trusted family member to us. Um, he consults with my kids on a lot of different aspects of their life. Uh, my daughter, in consultation with him, um, decided to go to school in Switzerland for college, and he encouraged her all the way. So Raymond is mature beyond his years, and he is a great confidant to a lot of people. And that's one of the great things I want you to understand about Raymond. A lot of people are saying, oh, they want someone to listen. You know, these are great listeners. But, and Raymond is a great listener, but Raymond is also a great confidant to the people around him. As you've seen tonight, there are people of all different ages who are willing to speak for Raymond. Um, from teachers in all different levels of the school system, trust him with what they think. All different children from all different ages. I've known Raymond since he was a seventh or eighth grade. And my son and all of his friends have always talked about how Raymond has everybody talks to Raymond and tells them what's going on in their lives and what they're really thinking. And that's an interesting skill for someone of Raymond's age to have. Okay, so when Raymond asked me to come speak for him, I went, oh, good Lord. One, I said yes without hesitation. But two, I said, now I have to think about how can I help these wonderful board members choose Raymond? You know, Raymond is 20 years old. Has he had 36 years teaching in the school system? No, he hasn't. But he's also someone who has been in Bedford County his entire life. And since the first day I heard about Raymond, when my son started talking about him, I said, well, tell me about Raymond. He goes, well, he's from here. He wants to stay here for the rest of his life, and he wants to make this the best place he can. He wants to teach high school at JF, high school history at JF, and he wants to be the mayor of Bedford someday. <laughs> and I said, gosh darn it, that kid's got his life planned out, and he's like 14, right? And that's Raymond. He knows who he is. He knows what he wants to do. And he knows that he's here in Bedford to make Bedford better. Not for the next 10 years, but Raymond's going to be here for the next 50 or 60 years. He has a long-term vision of how he wants to impact this community. How he wants to make it a better place for everyone who lives here. He wants to start doing it here on the school board. He wants to help provide perspective a different perspective than anyone else up here has. Raymond's 20. Two years ago, he was in the war zone in high school, right? <laughs> he has a perspective that is different than me and you and everyone else up there, right? And it, that's a good thing to add a perspective of a, someone who's so close to being in, in high school. Because one, he has people who are willing to tell him what they think. And they don't sugarcoat it when they talk to Raymond. They let them know what they really think about what's going on. And that's hard because if you're a principal or you're a superintendent or you're something, you aren't going to have a 10th grader walk up to you and tell you what the heck they think. But they will do that with Raymond. And that's a perspective I think it's important for you guys to consider adding to your board. Raymond adds a perspective that's different. Raymond is calm and collected and thoughtful. And he's a good example of things, of someone who would like to make the best place he can for the place where he lives and plans to stay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elam. Mrs. Zalski. Next two will be Chad Connor and Beatrice Arbera. Hi, I'm uh, Jen Lozowski. I live in District 3, um, 1619 Difficult Road. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of Chris Daniels. And the thing that I'm listening to um, people talk about Dr. Whitehouse, 
And the question comes to my mind is why isn't she the superintendent? She sounds absolutely fabulous. Now, the reason I tend to lean toward Chris Daniels is that I think in the next couple of years, we are going to be facing some really difficult economic times. We are facing inflation, which will mean that the government is going to have to service more of its debt. And <clears throat> your budget is probably 60% from state and federal government. So the reason I think Chris Daniels would be an asset to this board is his business acumen. And you are going to have to face some very difficult decisions in your budgets and allocation of resources. And Chris's, I think it's 17 years, he, he was vice president of a corporation and runs his business. Um, I think you just, he could be a tremendous asset in these difficult times. Um, but I think you also get a man that's very dedicated to the school system. Um, he had a passion about the whole mass thing with his um, special education uh, child and he, he, he went into action and he has a love for the school and he realizes that you have to have quality people, quality teachers, quality um, special educators. So I think his um, viewpoint would be to put those limited resources into teachers, into those special education, into those programs. And he would have the ability to say, hey, are these resources being used? You know, in the administration, that's a pretty big department. Is that the best use for our funds? So I think, you know, we all have our talents and I think it is best for the board to have some balance. And we have a very strong administrative department and I think you need balance on the board. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Chad Connor. Beatrice Arbera. That is the end of the people who have signed up. Now with our time constraints, we had four vacant slots plus four no-shows. So we have time for eight people if anyone would like to speak. Come on up. Hello, my name is Phyllis Parker. I live at 1802 Longwood Avenue. I have lived in Bedford for basically 37 years. I've known Dr. Whitehurst for most of those years. Uh, my daughter was a 2010 graduate of Liberty High School. I have worked with her when my daughter attended Liberty High School, and I have worked with her when I was on the Bedford City School Board. I was the chairman. In all our parent and school board conversations, I found her to be knowledgeable, caring, professional, and understanding. There are many reasons you need to appoint Dr. Whitehurst as the District 7 school board member, but here are just a few. First, Dr. Whitehurst is from District 7. She knows this community better than anyone else I know. She cares about the students and parents in this community. As a parent, whenever I brought my concerns to her, she listened carefully and quickly came up with a solution. 
I found her to always have the student's interest, interest in mind, and she worked extra hard to support them. When I was the city school board chairman, there were times I had to ask her questions. Her door was always open to me. I felt like I could ask her anything at any time. When I brought up an issue, she did her research and got back to me quickly. She helped make my job as a school board member easier because of the support and respect I felt from her. You need to appoint Dr. Whitehurst because of her knowledge and background in education. She knows how school boards work and she will be a help to each one of you. She will certainly be a voice from District 7, but she will also respect the voice you bring from your district. Dr. Whitehurst is absolutely the most qualified candidate. She comes from the perspective of being a parent, a grandparent, and an educator without hesitation. I strongly recommend to you that you appoint Dr. Whitehurst. The people of her community need her in this position and you need her in this position. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi guys, um, my name is Wendy, I'm District 4, um, 1124 Thompson Lane, I almost forgot my address. Um, several people took words that I was going to, that I typed up, so I'm going to try to go through what I have here. Um, we got to know Chris over the summer because our, our daughter's friends with um, a friend of his girlfriend's, Kayla. And actually, Kayla sent me a speech to read to you guys tonight. She's 16, currently attends JF. To start off, Chris is such an inspiration to everyone around him, and I know that he has brought such a light into my life. Chris has seen this community as something greater than a job or something, and more than something that is just there. Should have read this a little clearer before <laughs> I came tonight. He looks at it like a family and has always helped with the community. I know with Jefferson Forest High School, he has donated so much to the programs and has helped out with mentoring me on my extracurriculars and has put a lot of effort into knowing how the school is doing and if they need any help. Chris has guided me not only with school and extracurriculars, but also with life and how to treat people. He has taught me that you should always be kind, but never let your guard down. There have been many instances where Chris has helped me through rough times and I know I can always depend on him. He would be a wonderful candidate because he is hardworking, caring, and he loves this community and wants to give his all to it. Thank you. And that's from Kayla Parker. I just wrote down a couple notes. Um, what did the past election tell us about what our county desires of their school board members? For parents' voices to be represented, they did not vote for the educator's voice in November. In fact, District 2 unseated the career educator and board chair. And District 3 over overwhelmingly voted for Duane, also not in education. Diverse backgrounds is where it's at. Bedford County parents have proven they want someone relatable as their district representative. For the board to be compr compr comprised, I had that word backwards in the car, of people from all backgrounds, education levels, someone that is in the trenches of parenting alongside them. I have been attending school board meetings alongside Chris for the past eight months. In fact, Chris was one of the first parents to speak out against the mandatory masking this summer. This is where Matt and Duane's campaign took off, and this is where Chris stands out from the other candidates. He knows the challenges today's families are facing and is getting involved. He is true to his word and as consistent as they come. Those that have spoken up for Chris today are parents of today's children in our schools today. And our vote is for Chris Daniels. And when Chris runs in November, he will have the support of the Bedford County Patriots, which is who helped both Matt and Dwayne um, overwhelmingly win their spots on the school board. 
Um, and just as a side note, I agree with Jen on Cherie for the new supervisor. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Dunmeyer. Uh, we have a few more slots. Would anyone else like to speak? My name is Rachel Cooper and I live in District 7, 906 Morgan Street. I, I will have to say I want Mr. Daniels to be in the seat for District 7. Main reason being that I'm a parent of a child in Bedford County Schools. He did stand with me and with all the other parents who have special needs children who couldn't wear masks. He understood our issues, he, he heard our voices, and he helped support us. And also did Mr. Holbrook and Mr. Nelms as they were running for school board at the time as well. I know Ms. Whitehurst, she was my principal in high school. I've seen several of my principals and teachers throughout come up here and support her. I understand their backgrounds. She should be our next superintendent of our schools, just saying she has a great background, great with parents. But I do feel that we need a fresher face, someone that doesn't have an educational background. Uh, Mr. Smith, I understand you're young, you're, you're ambitious on trying to help parents, but I also feel you need a more educational background on not just uh, being a parent educational background. When you become a parent, you understand the parent's voice a little more. Understanding the children's voice at the school, yes, that's beneficial, but hearing from the parents is the main thing that the school needs to hear. Because without the, children, the parents, the children wouldn't be in within the school system. There would be no school system. I feel Mr. Daniels would help support the parents' voices within the school board as the other members have done so far. This is why I feel I, I would vote for him and that's why I feel y'all should vote for him as well and bringing him on the board because I feel he would stand with y'all, not against y'all. He would also stand with the parents, not against the parents. I, I wish all the candidates the best of luck, but I feel Mr. Daniels is the top one for the job. Uh, and that's my opinion. <laughs> but y'all have a great evening. Thank you for hearing my voice. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Ma'am. Good evening. I did not come here prepared to speak, but listening wholeheartedly, my name is Leslie Bowyer. My address is 1849 Triggs Road. I am District 3. I have, I voted for you, Mr. Nelms. So with politics aside, I've heard how much Mr. Daniels pushed for you, but also in your decision, remember, there are people that have voted for you that you may not know that helped put you where you are. I have heard that we need a diversified board, but I only see two educators up here. I'm an 18 year veteran. The love sign in Bedford was designed by my students. The murals in the gym by my students. I went to school with Dr. Whitehurst. I went to school with her husband. She served as my principal. We talked about children being called into the principal's office to have a little talking to. Well, I had a few of those too. Art teachers sometimes get out of the box. I played tennis with Miss Kirby and have many fond memories. Um, I work for Miss Neely and for Miss Hairston. What I want to say is we have a crisis. For teachers on the ground running, we do not have enough teachers. Teachers are covering classes. Teachers are leaving the field. I understand the need that children come first. We all do, that is our heart. But you all need to be mindful at this particular interim moment. We need someone prepared and understanding and willing to run. If we don't have teachers in the classroom with your support and guidance and our superintendent and those in central office, none of us can take care of our children. I didn't come here to speak, but as a Christian, my heart felt led and the Lord said, don't be afraid. Teachers are afraid to speak because we need our careers. But I stand before you humbly as a servant of this county, 
as a native with five living generations, and as my newest title granny. In five years, my grandson, and hopefully others to follow, will be a part of this community. Our burial plots are bought on Greenwood. We're here to stay. This is our home, as it is with the Whitehurst and the Cutler family. I humbly, as a servant of you all, I voted for you, Mr. Nelms. I love you, Susan. I don't know you two gentlemen, but I'd like to get to know you. Um, I know this is a hard decision for you, and you will take it very seriously, but I humbly ask for your full support on this interim position for Dr. Whitehurst simply because of her experience and for her devotion. She did not have to come and do this. This was a brave step for her, but her heart felt called that the duty wasn't done. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your service. Raymond, you're amazing. I can't wait to teach with you. <coughs> and Mr. Daniels, who couldn't be here, I applaud as a single dad. My heart goes to him for all of his hard work. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Bowyer. Would anyone else care to speak? Okay, got someone coming up. <coughs> Hello everyone. My name is Daniel Dunmire and uh, I live at 1124 Thompson Lane in Forest in District 4. Uh, I sent a, an email to the board last night uh, with my wishes of whom I would like to see represent uh, District 7 of course and uh, my, my comments were that I believe that Chris Daniels would be the, the best person to represent in this capacity. Um, you know, I, my wife and I moved here from Pennsylvania six years ago, and we enrolled our children in Bedford County Public Schools. Um, we were thrilled about the, uh, the situation of them in what we were um, enrolling them in. However, uh, we two years ago decided to homeschool um, our children for some various reasons. And then uh, this past, this current school year, we enrolled our children in one of the local Christian schools. Um, though that's due, I won't go into details on that topic, but it's due to the fact that we think that the public schools are lacking um, some, some, in some areas. Uh, myself, I've worked in uh, the software business for 24 years and I have uh, been a part of the same company, a, a global software company for that 24 years, that same 24 years. Um, over that time, I've watched the business uh, that I work for. I watched their board change and different representatives come in to represent different areas and capacities in that board. And I've noticed that it's best represented when there is uh, difference in those board members that bring different perspectives and uh, variety to the business and the decisions that have to be made in a company that's of global nature. Um, the candidates tonight sound all wonderful and um, I think it's wonderful to see the volunteering of people coming out to serve the community and I do appreciate that about the three candidates. I appreciate the service of the board members here today and, uh, and then all the community that's come out. But um, I'd like to just hone in on that point. It's already been said before, so it's, I'm not saying anything new tonight. A few people have said it. My wife and I have talked about it. She spoke a little bit earlier. And uh, it's something that we do feel is an important point. There are those that might represent a specific area of the job very, very well. Um, but there are others that might represent on the board in a, in a much better capacity due to the fact that they have business acumen and um, uh, have spent many years managing and overseeing many, many people and uh, everything from uh, locations and setups to um, 
you know, product inventory, et cetera, all the things that go into that. Um, and uh, for those reasons, again, I think that Chris Daniels would make it an excellent selection. Um, again, I, I would say that Ms. Whitehurst, Mrs. Whitehurst sounds like an excellent candidate as well, um, but perhaps there's also some place that would better fit that position, uh, your position in this school district. Um, you sound like an excellent resource for the entire community, and uh, I don't want to take away anything from what others have said. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Dunlar. Anyone else? Slots. Okay, I would like to close the public comment portion of this meeting. I want to take a moment to thank everybody for coming out, um, investing your time. It, it's, it, it can be time consuming and we are taking everything into consideration. We are receiving voluminous emails and we are not taking this decision lightly. Um, so again, we appreciate you coming out. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Mr. Hill. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Harrison. Is that who I heard? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. To the mass, you did. I have a first and a second. Do any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned.